Alrighty guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, wherever you are across this beautiful world. I am Cactus. And I'm Twinkle. Good afternoon to everybody. And if you would like to listen to more of our Megabyte, Megabyte podcast episodes, I almost said Byte, Megabyte podcast episodes of any of these platforms, you can go to Anchor, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Radio Public, or even that Spotify. Put the link down below in the channel. Explanation point podcast is the word you can follow those links right there. You can find us live and past and future broadcasts as well, too. Good afternoon to you, Fufu. How's everything going down there? It's hot. <laughs> it's hot. But it's going. Gotcha, gotcha. It's okay, though. If we can bottle up some of this heat, put it in a jar, and keep it for wintertime, I would love that because us people further north of you, yeah, we don't get so lucky in the wintertime. We get that, that, that S word, that snow word, if you will. <laughs> All you right, can have it all. Just <laughs> give me a little bit cooler temperatures, and I'll be fine. <laughs> hey, you got some of the heat coming this way uh, again this coming week. Today is rainy and cold, uh, cooler, I should say, above the uh, cardboard box here in my area. Let's talk about uh, topic number one today is Fortnite. I can't believe I'm talking about this, but this thing, this game, has been going on forever. Holy hell, have you ever played Fortnite? I played it a little bit. Uh -huh. I, I've probably played only like two or three games. Okay. Two or three games, I'd say? Yeah, I didn't do too bad. What? I was thinking about getting back into it, but it's, it's also one of those games that's more fun with friends rather than just random people. I, I, I agree with you 100%. It, it, the one thing... Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, let's talk about the different things. There's three separate game modes. There's Fortnite Save the World. Obviously, a lot of people play that one. Uh, it's it's like, a, how can I describe that? It was kind of like, um, I don't know. I See, I don't have the game itself. Uh, it's probably one of those kind of games where you, you, it's like a battle royale thing, but it's it's not. It's where you save the world. It was published like after Gears of War 3, I believe it was, around 2011. It was kind of like a hodgepodge thing. I guess it's kind of like um, where you go and let's see, how do I describe it? It's like a zombie thing, if I'm not mistaken. It's like a zombie type thing. See, again, I just like last episode we did before in the past, I don't do zombies, so I'm not too yeah. familiar with it. Of course, the one I'm familiar with is Fortnite Battle Royale. Battle Royale, of course, is the online community where you get you are against, I believe it's a hundred people. Uh, if, uh yes, Battle Royale is a hundred players, and you can do you can you can be by yourself or you can go into a team of four. Right. If I'm not you could do, I believe, two. You could do you alone. Do you could do duels alone, as well. Duos and squads. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Up to three to four players. I, I mean, for a br, this was kind of like the infancy stage of battle royale games. This one kind of mm -hmm. put it on the map. The one that really put it on the map, if you want to really go back, is actually I think would be PUBG, public, you know, uh, battleground. I think that I've played PUBG. I sucked at it, but I've played it. I, I don't like the angles in which you shoot on that game. That game has never been friendly to me. I never liked how you can angle your gun where you, you cock your gun to the left or to the right, like the angle shifts. I don't like that. Maybe it would be good if like if I'm near a building or whatever the case it is, but it to me it just right. I never like liked it. Out to... Right. I do yeah. have a winner winner chicken dinner under my belt though. Thank goodness. I do have one. I don't. <laughs> What was it? But speaking of like building and stuff, see, now this is where I remember Fortnite when I first, it, I think it came out uh, in 2017 was the first release of Fortnite. It was in midsummer. I think it was it, actually not too long ago from today. I think it would be their four year anniversary coming up soon, mm -hmm. uh, which is amazing because when I went to TwitchCon 2018, they literally, it was so massive. The draw was so huge. They had a separate building just specifically for Fortnite and some players as well, too. I know there was a lot of big streamers there. There was a lot of big hype about the game. They had the little guy riding yeah, <laughs> different little animals I mean, there and stuff. I mean, I think that, you know, the big streamers is what really gave Fortnite its push. Right. And really got the name Fortnite out there. It's crazy. Because 
Exactly. If if the big streamers weren't playing it at the time, it probably would have been, you know, kind of like PUBG. It's known, but not <laughs> nearly as much, and it's not played as much. See, the thing, okay, so the thing I think what PUBG made the mistake, just like a lot of these games that are today, they they threw a whole bunch of stuff in front of you and said, okay, here's the game, we'll develop it. Because I remember when I first played PUBG, when you were landing with your parachute, the ground, the, 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 the buildings and stuff around you weren't even fully mapped in or picked, they were all yeah. extremely pixely and it had to load at everything else. Now, yeah. Fortnite was the same way in the beginning of the game. I remember that distinctly where, and you were trying to land on a rooftop or whatever the case it was, it would take forever for it to render in, if you will. The pixels then became the objects of the buildings and stuff. It would look like it, you know, which should look like it versus this hodgepodge mess of pixels. Like, holy shit, am I playing Minecraft again? But for exactly. me, some of the things I have actually done on Fortnite. I've actually had a couple wins. I have solo wins down on my belt. Um which is an accomplishment for me because my temper on that game soars. The blood pressure just goes through the roof. See, my my like closest to the the number 1 spot was like number 7 and that was my very first game. So I feel like I did amazing for the first game. But after that, it wasn't quite so. I, I died quite quickly did in the you, next game or two. Did, now, did you play Fortnite on PC or did you play it on a console? I played it on PC. The oh. first time I played Fortnite was actually only like two months ago. See, and I, it's, been, it's been out for, like you said, almost four years. Almost so. four years to the day, man. Next week, next the twenty fifth of July is when it's. Uh, I'm I'm a hundred. I'm almost a hundred percent positive. The twenty fifth of July is when it first installed or came out. The early access of it, and I think it's still in early access. But the, my problem with that game is, <laughs> ooh, uh, where do I begin? Um, when I first started playing the game, it was a new thing. It was like completely new, squeaky clean. Cause I like games like that. When it's squeaky clean, it comes out, it's brand new. It's like, holy shit, what is this? But then after a while, I get kind of the, the RNG, the random number generator. So say for example, now, now this is what really pissed me off. There's, there's the shotguns in the game in particular, uh, they're colored, they're different colored means different levels and stuff it was. But the thing that really would piss me off is if I had a shotgun and say Joe Schmo, he gets, he gets around a lot, doesn't he? Joe Schmo. Oh yeah. If, if it, I was shooting said Joe Schmo and he's shooting back with a shoddy, say if I only take 70 HP off him, hit points or health points, with the same exact colored gun, if I'm using a green gun, we'll say we'll use a green shotgun, okay? The double pump or whatever it's called, the pump shotgun. I'm sitting I'm just here. I'm going to agree with you because I don't know what guns they have on this game. Okay. Well, the shotgun is always the go to gun when you're up close and fighting. That's like the go to. I mean, every big streamer uses it. That's, uses that's for practically any game when you're up close and personal, though. Right. You got to give them a little kiss with a, you know, a 12 gauge to the face, you know? But in this game, what really irritates me is the random numbered generator, the RNG, because of the fact that when you shoot said Joe Schmo, say if I take 70 off him, he shoots me the exact same thing either knocks me down in one hit or damn near kills me in one hit. So it's that number. So it's not equal. So when yeah. it's a random number, say for, you know, there's, there's that hit box and I, I get that. There's a hit box for every game out there. First person shooters to, you know, battle Royales. There's, there's always that hit point, but you know, eh, to me, it was always seemed unfair. No matter what I F and did, it wasn't my connection to the, the servers. I know there were some lag servers and stuff like this. But when I watched big streamers do the exact same shit I did, like Ninja, for example, he was the master of that game. I don't know if he still plays it or not. I, I don't follow him, but I remember distinctly he would play the game and he just made it look so simple, like instant builds here. And, and that's my point coming up with will be the next point will be the, the builds. 
I, I, it, to me, it was just a number thing that would always piss me off. That and the storm, you know, the, the storm thing was okay, but you know, PUBG, of course, had the gas and stuff like that. I think before yeah. Fortnite. But the thing I always found difficult, and um, the thing it always made made it harder for me was the building. Now there was different ways you can box yourself in, or cube yourself in, or even put like that little top part on yourself and stuff. If you watch and, people, and see, the thing is, when I played, they didn't like give you like a walkthrough on how to build and stuff. So I did not do any building. I did not know what I was doing. All I knew is I was running and shooting. Right. That's it. I would occasionally. I, I think they need to put like a tutorial for new players that have never played before to teach them, you know, the basics between the guns, the the building concept, because I, you could give me all the stuff to build and I still won't know how to do it. There was a guy named Mur, Murs, who always, who, who to this day I still talk to. He was an amazing builder slash destroyer of that game. He was really good at the game. He could sit there and he won us a lot of uh, Battle Royale games uh, with the duels and stuff like that. But he was, I mean, the way, it, of course, you know, I get knocked down two seconds into the game pretty much or late game. But he would always overbuild, build this, build that. Now, there's different settings you can do. There's, there's a variance of, of the way you can tweak the builds where it's pretty quick and stuff like this. They've, they've tweeted it or not tweeted it. Well, they've tweeted the, the messages too, but they tweak how you can do these various things. And I'm sure on YouTube, there's probably a billion different people like, Hey guys, how you doing? This is how you do this. Yeah, I could see it. But the thing with me was you build the walls, build the walls and stuff like this. And it, 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 it never protected me. The key of it was is the wood sucked. Brick was pretty good, but the metal was what you wanted to get. And I liked how you could take things and how you would uh you would you would grab the the materials you need, the raw materials, you know, you go around destroying buildings and stuff like that. I like that. Man, building those brick walls and stuff was just like such a pain in the ass. You Yeah, for for someone who doesn't know anything about it, it, it seems like it's kind of difficult at first right and i mean i've i've seen a lot of gameplay on fortnite i have friends that play it and i've seen them build like these elaborate looking things right really fast and i'm like i've well, even seen them build how, like... how did you learn how to do that because it didn't tell me anything about how to build it it's either trial and error or just continuously building things right and left i know there's a sandbox mode as well too Kind of like Minecraft in a sense, you know, you could build your stuff, you could build different things, yep. you could spawn everything in it, you know, create games and stuff like that, race courses, platform challenges and more. I was, I, I like sandbox games. I think Far Cry, uh, Far Cry, the original was a game where I started learning how to do sandbox stuff, but I don't, I agree with you. It was, it was difficult to do for me. I, I couldn't figure out how to build fast enough. It's like I would do it and then some people could just like, you know, instantly build a the wall and then switch it to a wall that had a, a window in it and then switch it back. Like it was click, 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 click. Like, holy, how the hell are you doing this? Lots and lots of time and practice. I Yeah, it was really good how people can do that. But it, the one thing I did, I did a major grind and I wanted the banana outfit and it took me ages to do it. it took me like two or three weeks of streaming it and also grinding my gears to get it and i was very happy to do it and i got it and i was happy i'm like i finally achieved something i think i was like a level 80 or something that you had to get to a high level just to get this banana skin and i still have it to this day which is really <laughs> one of those things that i enjoyed uh but uh, i don't know it was such a grind to get and that's the thing about that game it's very grindy I mean, yes, it's very grindy, but it's also, if you want that stuff, you can also pay to play. And I know a lot of people will. Right. That's not something I'm going to do, though. It's, I mean, the game, though, for merit purposes, the game has longevity. I know there's a younger market, you know, the younger kids watch it and, and play it because, well, they had Ninja and they had 
Shroud who played it. I think even Dr. Disrespect for a short yeah. time. I, I do it. remember watching Dr. Disrespect play some Fortnite. Tim the Tat Man. So you're talking the big four pillars of, well, now three pillars. Yeah, absolutely. On Twitch, you know, but the game's got, like, in 2018, it won an, a Webby Award, uh, a Game Critic Award in 2018. I mean, just under a year of it being out, it immediately is winning these, you know, Teen Choice Awards. It, it won a lot of awards. Gold, I mean, even the Golden, I think it was the Golden Joystick Award, too, it got for the best competitive game. An ultimate game of the year now that's like wow really but okay I that's mean, cool if you, if you think about it they they even do like e3 right. has competitions oh yes for fortnite that's how big this game got this, so quick this game has gotten so big and has gotten such the attention of people now the licensing of this game is crazy you think about all the licensed games. In, in fact, they have, I think, uh, let's see, how many did they have? Like one, two, three. They had at least, they had Star Wars. They had, uh, I mean, Star Wars was a big thing. I remember playing that when the Star Wars was huge. Star Wars, I remember distinctly, I was playing with a couple people and they had the lightsabers. And you were able to, the lightsabers were pretty damn neat. I got to admit, the lightsabers were really freaking cool when it came to a game that was, you know, basically you're finding random shotguns and stuff like this. But here you are with these lightsabers that could just destroy shit in one swipe or two swipes. The stormtroopers, you know, that was okay. But I think one of the coolest things they added into the whole thing, and I think it started a trend or it was one of the very first games ever to do it where there was a live person that would do a live DJing or a live announcements and stuff like this. The, um, they had, uh, what was that? They had the live star Wars events and they had all these, you'd, you'd gathered in this one section it was a countdown, and then all of a sudden, like, all this shit, these TIE Fighters, the Millennial Falcon is flying by, just go whoosh. And I'm like, wow, this is crazy, because you'd all stand around, and, and you're listening to this huge announcement, like the gods opened up the wall, the ceiling, and it's just like, this is live shit for everybody. Do you, I don't know if you remember that or not. Um, foo-foo. Uh, I mean, I I do not. Yeah, there there was. Then again, I I also just got into back into PC gaming last year, so I I wasn't really up to date on everything. Right. Yeah, the Star Wars event was huge, and of course they've had you know d famous, infamous DJs play live shows and stuff like that. It was kind of neat, but like. Uh, DC, Marvel, The Walking Dead, Alien. I mean, these are huge licensings for me to. Oh God, yes. To get a license, you know, go to these companies and say, "Hey, look, you know, I, I have, I own this game, and I'd like to add your content into it." That's a big deal. I mean, that's a big step into the office. Like, holy hell, I'm about ready to ask if I can get this licensed because that's not cheap. Exactly. And not cheap at all. And again, like I said, it was one of the first games I think I've ever seen that would do stuff like that, where they did this live event where you would hear this voice of a person. I, I forgot who it was, but I, I don't know if he was like one of the, the makers or designers of the game of Fortnite. And then you had somebody who, who was part of Star Wars or whatever, but it was crazy. It was one of the funniest things, but it was the most like scary things, but it was a, a cool thing. And I think to this day, that's still the only video game that's ever done something like that, a live event. I mean, I don't know of any other ones, but again, we're talking about Fortnite, which is a very well-known, huge game. And I mean, they've got the money to do this stuff. Epic Games, man, I'm telling you, they they really put the dot on on survival battle royale games. I mean, PUBG was good when it came out, but it has a lot of problems outside the gate, man. And to this day, it still has problems. You still have people who are the game development is slow. The the there's there's new maps they pop out. 
But uh, look at Fortnite, like all the things they do to this game. They add shit like almost I every... mean, they're still expanding it. They they're released still stuff working so on it. They're, they release new skins, new costumes, new all all sorts of new stuff right. all the time. Like when when I think of a fast paced developing game, Fortnite mm-hmm. comes to mind for sure. For yeah, I mean, if you were to say the word Fortnite, a lot of people probably globally will say, "Yes, I know that game," or "I've heard of that game," or "Yes, I have played that game." Or that's one of my favorite Battle Royale games. Exactly. It's a favorite BR game. They've introduced so many different things. They've had planes in it. They've had motor vehicles in it. They've done like wormhole thingies. They did it where they flooded and froze a section. I remember that too. It would like fall out in the springtime, which was really neat. They, they've they changed a lot. You know, I haven't played it in a long time, but from what I have heard and seen, They've added and changed a lot of like the little towns or cities, or whatever it is. They've expanded things. I I don't know. I to me, it's a cool game, but it makes my blood boil very quickly. I can't play it for more than maybe two An or hour? three two or three <laughs> games tops. I mean, people who have watched me play in the past could probably agree. It really makes my <laughs> it really makes me my it makes me blood boil. I guess you could say. Yeah, I I could only play those two or three games my first time, and then I was like, um, yeah, I'm gonna stop before I rage because <laughs> I've played my fair share of first person shooters mm-hmm. and third persons, and mm-hmm. I just I feel like that's one that you know you can only handle so much. Before you really start to err at the game. Right. Yeah. It, it's just like with, with a lot of BR games. I've always loved the first person shooters. You have PSs, but the BRs are always ones that kind of like irritate me. You know, I, I could see, I, I guess if I played it longer and if I sat down and, and studied the mechanics, because, you know, all these BRs all have different mechanics. They all have the same premise. Be the first at the end of the finish line. Be the first to win. Be the last one to survive. Right. And it gets very hairy at the end. I don't know if you've ever watched or just, you know, just sat back and and watched players. I've I've been in the the end circle, Mm -hmm. as you would say. I've watched people play like PUBG and seen that chaos at the end and same with Fortnite. Like I said, the furthest in I ever got was I I died at number seven. Right. Seven. So place. that that chaos right there at the end, you don't know how many people are there that are left. You're not focused on that. You're focused on trying to win. Right. And it it gave me a headache the first first game because one i didn't know where to go i didn't know the map Mm -hmm. two i'm just trying to run and survive and that's another thing with battle royales you don't even have to kill the most people you just have to be the last one to get that final kill you could literally just walk around be silent like a ninja walk around behind trees and stuff like that as the circle closes you can wrap around you can do all that stuff. You're right. You don't even have to kill one person in the game. You could literally no, just you win have it. To kill, you have to kill one person, and yeah. that is the second place person. I think if I ever if I ever get back into Fortnite, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try. I don't know if there's there's probably obviously I'm not the very first person to think that idea or you, but say for example, yeah. if I decided to put that as my theme, like okay, you know, there's like games done fast where people play speed runs of video games. Yeah. Well, what if you're like, you know, you're, you hide in the shadows throughout the game. The idea would ab- obviously be the last man behind everybody else. You want to be not seen by people, which is kind of hard because there's bots too. Now they've introduced yeah. bots into the game so that they're kind of like watchdogs or kind of like dogs, you know, they start barking and they'll start shooting at you. So that kind of gives your, your, you know, where you're Position at away. away. Yeah. yeah. So that would be kind of a, but see, that would be part of the challenge. You could sit here, hide in bushes, hide behind trees. You see a person in front of you, like an actual human player, 
running in front of you and you just kind of hide. You just let everybody else just kind of like bowling pins fall over. And then it's just 1v1 you and versus the other person. And then you spray and pray and hope you take that win. You better hope that you have that good gun too, that golden gun. You know? Yep. But see, that's the thing too. I've like, I've seen, I've watched people play and, and they've had like, even I, I saw one guy, I, I guess he was trolling the person and he, obviously this person seemed like they've been playing for a very long time. Cause they were building like, they were building skyscrapers in like three seconds, you know, like, boom, 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 boom. And, they, and they sit there and they're bending down and they're drinking their, their, you know, potion and stuff that they're, you know, for their shield potions and stuff like this. So they, they know how to play the game, but he was using just pistols. Maybe it was a, a challenge or something where he had to use so many different things. Uh, so many challenges of, of, of shooting with a pistol or whatever it was, get so many kills or frags. If they, the old school call it frags. Now they just call it kills, I would assume. But I saw him doing that and he actually won. I'm like, holy shit, dude. I'm like, wow, this, this guy actually won with a pistol of all things. I mean, it can be done, obviously. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But, you know, it's not an easy thing to achieve. It's not an easy, it is not an easy game. Yeah. I mean, it is, you know, pointing, your, uh, you know, pointing your gun, your weapon at Point somebody. and shoot. Right. Kinda. But there's so many different aspects to it that, you know, the building aspect, the, the staying inside the circle. Me personally, in game in battle royale games, I get distracted right. trying to find loot. And the f the first game I played where I came in seventh, I went the wrong way and I was stuck trying to like go up a mountain. Oh no! Oh, I can uh, yeah, I I know what you yeah. Mm -hmm. I miraculously found my way. There was like a river, and I miraculously found my way. And I got a kill right there because someone saw me running up the river and they were trying to be sneaky and run behind me. And I turned around and I saw him and I killed him. And then I just kind of followed the rocks as the circle was closing. And I'm not going to lie. It was one of the most nerve wracking things in that game was trying to not die because of the circle. The circle does, it, it definitely pr puts pressure on you. If you're not familiar with it, like we were talking about PUBG, you know, it has a circle like that. All games now that are BR basically have a circle. So it's like they copied after, off, at, you know, off each other, which is kind of weird. Like, okay. And I kinda... mean, it, it, your circle, it could be, you know, like just a circle that you have to stay inside or it can be like, I believe PUBG is like a fog that like takes your knocks your health down if I remember correctly it's been quite a few years since I've watched or played PUBG and then you have like Call of Duty now has the battle royale and mm -hmm. each circle is different and that that circle is also randomly generated it's never going to go the same way twice and, and that's another thing too. You have to, there, there's several things you got to do. You got number one, you got to worry about other people around you. And if you're going to rotate around, rotating is key in this game, you know, any kind of BR in general, but rotating yeah, around, you, you have to keep your entire character on a swivel at all times. You do. And that drives me nuts. You do. You really do. You, you have to look on the, the mini map, put a UAV up if you can. Then you have to worry about, okay, the gas is closing in. Where is it going to rotate? So am I going to go to the right? Am I going to go to the left? Which side is the faster route? So if you play these kind of games after a while, you can, you can sense which side of the circle is closing faster than others. There's times where I just skirted where the gas line was and I'm slow. I mean, basically just walking just right outside of the area where I'm inside the circle, but it's, it's riding behind me, but it's at a slow pace. There's other times where I'm like, I'm not going to make this. And I, I have to build this huge ramp, like a, a skyscraper map, which like I'm reaching to the clouds to jump off this ramp to, to parachute and get into the circle. See, now if I knew how to build getting up that mountain would not have been a problem. Cause I could have just built like zigzag steps mm -hmm. all the way up, but I had no idea how to build at all. Hmm. It, I mean, it takes a, there, there's, there's, 
uh, button sequences that you can do. Again, like I said, there's there they've come to the play now where they've kind of shortened those sequences. I I was never a big builder on the game. I basically was hide behind cover, shoot, uh-huh. build a front wall like a wall in front of me, and then just you know build it so I'm I'm shielded. Basically, I'm a big wall that can shield me. But you know, building these these towers and hiding behind these towers and stuff like this was monotonous it gets to the point where if it's like the the uh, 1v4 situation or 1v5 where i should say 1v4 because you against four others so it's the top five it gets to be really nutsy because people are building these huge tower things they're behind them sniping using rockets which i think they should have gotten out of the thing years ago i don't know if they still have them in it or not those rockets were really annoying and that's another thing that really got me po'd about this game was the the constant use the barrage of rockets like these people would just jump in the air and rocket you and to kill you instantly but miraculously they never got injured or if they did it was very minimal again because of the rng i always died in it which really sucked but it gets really narrow and it gets really quick it escalates quickly when it's like a 1v4 situation and then that's where you really got to put your thinking skills. Okay, where's the next circle going to close? Am I on the left side of it, the right side of it, the top or bottom of it? Mm-hmm. And do I have to rotate in? Do I have to go around? Is there a person to the left, to the right of me, in front of me? As you have all these points, all these angles. That's you when see, the adrenaline really starts picking up. That's where comps are really good. To, you know, comms or are, are communications are really good, especially if you're doing like duels and stuff like this. Uh, if, if not, you're... you're solely relying on audio triggers that re- that you can hear and listen to like if you can hear a person's footsteps walking or if you hear gun like the reloading of their gun you can kind of get the guesstimate i guess of where they are at but again if you don't have that spatial audio if you don't have that audio that's really good and, and i've watched big streamers bitch and complain about you know, another BR game that the, they say the audio sucks really bad because you can't hear the, you know, you can't hear the audio. So audio is a very key thing, but man, building on it is it will make or break you at the end. It's definitely one of those games that you have to be on top of your stuff. Oh, you constantly. have to. And again, like it's, it's con it's a constantly constant moving game mm-hmm. where you have to be completely and totally aware of your surroundings at all times. You do. And and, and if you rotate right, you can find the people who are lagging behind that are just getting towards the edge of the circle and you can take them out. That's that's good rotation. It's a good key thing. It's just getting used to knowing the game itself and, and how the game moves and how everything the circle closes and, and some people you can read really easy. I I used to be able to read people very well, but other people it's like more difficult. The more practice they've had on the game, you know, it's harder to read them. Oh yeah, like I'm probably one of those really easy to read people because, mm-hmm. like you said, I just I'm one of those run, gun, and find cover. Right. I don't build at all, which I need. I should probably learn how, but <laughs> right. I don't I don't do any of the building. I literally just look for the loot, find the players, and shoot them. Now see, there's been a growing concern. Now this is the 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 opposite side of the game. There's there's been a growing concern about the the battle royale with the younger audiences. Especially on the mobile clients. So, you know, you can find this on your phones now, your tablet. So there's people who are playing on their phones and, and, you know, instead of doing their homework because they're playing this game. Well, you know, I've seen my, my big influencer, Joe Schmo, do it. I could be like him if I just practice and play it. The hell with homework or schoolwork or whatever the case it is. There's also concern about the impact of the game having on, on the younger audience of the depiction of, of gun violence. I mean, yeah, that, that's a huge concern with a lot of parents that their kids play this game. 
I guess if I had, you know, kids or if I had a family, I guess I would be kind of concerned. Do I look at it as like, haha, it's just an animation, vi-, you know, and stuff like that. I grew up, we didn't have any guns in the house. I didn't have any, we, we didn't hunt. We didn't, you know, hunt Bambi or anything like that. So we weren't really a gun toting family, if you will. So games that had, that were shooters and stuff like this that I played on, you know, Super Nintendo and, and, and all that stuff. I, I didn't think twice about it, but today's generation exactly. is a lot different than mine. For some reason, you know, these, these generations now, they like GTA, they think, oh, okay, I can just go and steal a vehicle, you know, because the game can do it. I can do it too. But, but then again, that also falls a lot on how the children are raised. Right. And I'm if sure it does. And if you sit down and talk to your kids about gun violence and mm-hmm. explain to them, then no, the video games probably will not impact them mm-hmm. at all. And they're going to look at it as, oh, it's just a game. It's not real. You can't go do this in real life. Mm. Just like stealing a car. R- right. And, and you if know. You, if you sit and talk to your children and let them know, you know, this is right and this is wrong. And you teach them to recognize the difference between a video game and real life. It can mm. help a lot, right. and it'll probably make make a world a little bit safer in the aspects of violence. Right. I I, get, I mean I I could see that I could I could totally see. I mean it's just how you raise you know that's how you raise a family in general. You know you tell them what's good, what's right from wrong. But, you know, and I could see that people are concerned about it with the game, the violence and stuff like that. But, I mean, that's just about with any game, Mm -hmm. you know, how it is out there. They can do, I mean, you can can have a tree, well, just like, uh, what is that game, Uh, Paladins, where it's a tree that has an axe. (laughs) You know, people are like, oh, well, it's a simple tree. It's not, you know, not depicting a real human being, but it's just an axe. But that's also not the mindset of... Right. Children. That's true too. That is true. That's when that's when monkey see monkey do comes into play. <laughs> do you know they have an inaugural thirty million dollar Fortnite World Cup tourney? They had one that took place in July of twenty nineteen. Think about that. Thirty million dollars competition to play this game. I mean, that yeah, is to win that money. I mean, that's just absolutely crazy. It was, I think it was like Pro-Am and uh, there was a Battle Royale. I mean, holy hell. Do you, I mean, that's almost like how Rocket League is. Rocket League is, is similar. There's always a, a huge, huge gathering for, they always have tourneys and stuff. Overwatch has tourneys as well too, you know, which is really co- crazy. Um, players received... Like- like fifty thousand oh. dollars. Oh God! Sign me up. I'll play next time. Just for reaching the finals, and and uh, the top prize was three million dollars. Think about that. You're you're sitting here. You're playing a video game. I could see why. I could see That's why. A lot of V bucks. I <laughs> I could see why the draw to like these these people today. They want to stream and they want to play these games. I could see the draw because it, it it looks so simple to do. Million, yeah, hey, I could play a game for a million dollars. Hell, you know, I could do that. But it's not that easy. Oh, lo- no. You have to practice. You have to get that competitive spirit. And you have to train just like you would have to train for a boxing match or racing or pretty much any kind of competition. Yeah, you you can't just do it overnight. But but see that's the thing. A lot of these streamers today, they think, "Oh, well, if Joe Schmoke can do it, I can do it and I can cut corners and stuff like this and and do this and and I I can make that money really quick." It's it's not that easy. And and I wish the people would kind of get that out of their mind where they think it's it's quick money, quick cash. It's not. Oh no. They all they got to do is, you know, play one game. Right. Or not even one game. You can play like three, four, five games. And you will realize the people competing for that money have been doing this for 
they've been practicing and training for a year, maybe longer. Right. But they they're putting in the time and they're doing nothing else. And I'm sorry, but me personally, I have a lot of stuff on my plate. Mm-hmm. I I personally would not have the time to prepare for something like that. It's just like, you know, with the Olympics and stuff, you know, it just takes time to it, repetitively. It, the, the muscle coordination, you know, the it, just the memory of how to do this, how to do that. That's what, you know, any game or anything like that. But those games, they're always different. Like one game could play differently than the next game. Or mm-hmm. one game could be similar to the last game you played, you know, basically the same kind of lobby. People are la- laid back or then you got the super sweaty ones who are like just nonstop building and, and or they're just camping and just shooting you from a distance and stuff mm-hmm. like that. The one thing, though, about this game Fortnite was the viewership it has gotten. I mean, we're talking big numbers. Big numbers on on like the platform Twitch, the streaming platform. They had broke records even that hold to this date in regards to like like for example, Ninja used to draw in tens of thousands of people oh, yeah. watching him play this game. They had it to the point like Drake and uh, hell, I think they even had some football players too come in, yep. you know, and and played these games. I think they would even play with some of the you know regular Joes. But it was just, it's like you can, you know, if you, if you stream on Twitch, you know, when there's like something major going on because you start getting that lag, you start getting lagged from your little green light. If you use studio OBS, if you know what I'm talking about out there, you know what I mean? Oh yes. And you'll notice you can feel the lag because there's so much people, so many people that are going to watch a specific person or a celebrity. I mean, they have celebrities right and left now on the, on these games oh God, yeah. it's it's like they had you know travis scott is a uh, wide receiver uh what was his name juju smith i think his name is yep from the pittsburgh steelers i i mean holy hell i, I wonder how much they had to pay him to, to play these games but now i don't know but he probably got hooked he he probably did i i know i i think it was even snoop dogg or something uh, there was another guy too that was a big celebrity who played these mm-hmm. games and which is cool if they're doing it for charity and stuff like that. I'm all for it. But oh, of course. But the numbers they draw is sick. I don't know if it still gets that to this day, if it gets the same numbers or I know it's been declining because a lot of people are saying Fortnite quote is dying, but I don't know, man. Fortnite's been around almost four years and it's I highly doubt Fortnite is dying. It's been yeah, it's been very you know, very high in, in popularity. And of course, you know, the younger, younger kids that were, you know, eight or 10 or 15 back then, well, the older ones may not play it as much as the younger ones, but I mean, there's still, I mean, you could be four to 40, I guess, and still play the Mm -hmm. game because there's a lot of different things you can do to it. You can build, you can, you can find different things they have. That's another thing too. They have events, they have special events, they have like little Easter eggs in the game. So it's... It, it was kind of like a middle finger to PUBG. Well, I can do better than you. You know, PUBG kind of set the, the, the whole BR thing in motion. And Fortnite and just Fortnite ran. Fortnite took the spotlight. I mean, just think about it. It estimated $2.4 billion. I mean, that's a pretty big number. Think about, one, people are buying the V-Bucks for in-game. Mm-hmm. And then you got to think of all the merchandise that you can get in real life. Mm-hmm. I went to the store the other day and I saw all sorts of different backpacks and lunch boxes because it's more directed towards the younger generations, which is fine. Right. But then I went into, I think it was like Spencer's and they got t-shirts and they've got. Oh, yeah. They've got Fortnite jewelry they've got it's absolutely wallets and everywhere everything i mean they they i mean if if it's hell they they would probably put it on a a a q-tip if they could right you know anything for anything fortnite just gotta add the word to it boom there you go you know they have all these things and the name and the colors that's all you need exactly exactly or the llama 
the that's the biggest one is the llama the pinata llama when i went to twitchcon 2018 like i was saying earlier in the opening when i went there they had a huge soccer field this this building was just huge you could literally sit on the grass and they had these mammoth 100 plus foot tall uh, screens that were people were playing Fortnite live there at the place. They were doing competitions, etc. And the entre- when you walked into this area, they literally had a dude riding the llama, which was hilarious. You know, they had a couple things. They had a uh, you know people dressed in the outfits and stuff. But the llama, dr- the 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 <laughs> the riding of the llama thing was really funny. It was really it was kind of cute. I thought it was it was comical. It was whimsical, if you will. It was kind of cool. I like that. It was it was neat. It was different. It was something you don't see. But man, that was in its heyday. And in the first half of 2018, they estimate, and now get this, the Battle Royale, the revenue. Are you ready to jump out of your seat? No. <laughs> the first <laughs> half of 2018, quote, they have estimated that they made hundreds of millions of dollars per month. Just on revenue from Fortnite Battle Royale in the first half of 2018. Now they've launched July 25th, 2017. And here you are six months later and you're making hundreds of millions of dollars a month. And he estimated then revenue was at 2.4 billion and the Fortnite reached more than 9 billion in revenue by the end of 2019. 9 billion. That's, that's insane. That's, Only two years is all it took. Yeah. Oh my God. Become a multi-billion-dollar franchise. A multi-billion-dollar. Yeah. I mean, for, I don't know. If Facebook took off that fast, or even hell, Amazon. I, I don't know, but this one took off like a rocket. I think that's it, for sure. I think it did. I think it broke. It must have broke records. It had to have broke records. You think about that, like just in the first half of, of like six months, hundreds of millions of dollars per month, people were pouring into it for skins, for different things, for the battle. See, that's the thing too. They have the the membership thing, the battle royal pass, the game pass thing for it. So where you pay an X amount and then you're guaranteed there's like a hundred levels and you were able to get all these extras, the extra skins, extra moves, extra dance moves. You know, the, the skins were the weapons and, and your your parachute, if you will, was, I mean, like, holy crap. I know people who were spending mucho money on that, like crazy. Oh, yeah. I mean, a great another great thing about it is the fact that, you know, yeah, the Save the World is only available for, like, PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Right. But the Battle Royale and the Creative, they're on all platforms, including the Switch and the phone. And they, they're they also trying to release it for the next-gen consoles, the PS5 and the Series X and S. Mm. So you can, you can pick which platform you want to play on, or you can play on them all. That's really wild. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you're going for the gusto, you might as well go for all consoles and and and, exactly. and any way possible to shove it down people's throats. You know, it's just like okay, well, it could be just for this console or just specific. But now, as you're saying, it's it's for the Xbox One, PlayStation Four, the new gens that are coming out, the new. I mean, for your Galaxy, for the they had it just like for the the Nintendo Switch. We'll be talking about yep. you know things in the future i mean hell if i mean they have no and there's there's no way they're gonna run out of ideas i i would guess in that game or in that that series because it's it's just a cult classic now to people i mean i don't see it dying anytime soon that's for sure i don't i i don't either with the v bucks people kind of you know i'm sure even during this this hour of conversation i'm sure they've made hundreds of thousands of another, dollars yeah i was about to say another hundred thousand two hundred thousand yeah yeah the exclusive skins when buying new consoles and fo- i mean that's crazy i i do recall a a commercial that when there was a gaming phone and ninja was on it 
and it was i think an apple phone it was something new of course i'm sure he got a new phone for free yeah because partners get free stuff affiliates don't we have to work for it yes <laughs> but it had we work Fortnite. hard and that's what matters exactly 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 and that's what it's all about to a degree i guess but hey Fortnite, man it, it's it's definitely uh one of those games that are going to continue on from here on it seems like anyways the creative side i think the sandbox that, that's just under i i guess it, it's the underdog people don't realize about yeah. what the cool things you can do about it but you know that's a that's a whole thing uh, coming up after the break, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be talking about the Steam Deck. Now, this is a, a new thing that's just come out by Valve, by Steam. Uh, very, uh, very hot topic right now, for so sure. Extremely. And we'll we'll dive deep into it. We'll dive into the numbers. We'll dive in the various things and the pluses and minuses of the Steam Deck. That will be coming up here after break, ladies and gentlemen. We will return after these messages. What do you think about this, Fufu? Well, the Steam Deck mm -hmm. looks interesting as hell. And it's really it's like a really hot topic right now. Right. So I'm I'm really looking forward to like learning more about it. Mm -hmm. Because I know right now you can pre order it. Yeah. Oh yeah. You could port you now the thing is there was the rumors. I now I remember hearing about these rumors too. They were talking about this thing. Valve, as of course, is a maker of games and stuff, but they, the business now, they're looking at, into going into the PC, the portable PC. So literally, I could plug this thing into a monitor or a TV. It can install apps and software. You can watch streaming video on it. So essentially, again, it's just like a portable PC. I don't. It's almost as if it's like a PC in Nintendo Switch version. Right. I, yeah, I, I can see that. It's got a new because if you think about it, with the switch, you you have the dock that right. you plug into your TV, mm -hmm. and then you have the the Joy Cons you can take off and use as a controller, or you can have the Joy Cons on the actual screen of the switch, and it's portable, and you can download your game straight to it, and this and that, and this this almost looks just like a switch yeah i was gonna say it kind of looks like a, a like a modded version of a switch i i don't own a nintendo switch but it also looks like another console i'm trying to remember there was several years ago you could play sonic the hedgehog and stuff like this on a game that it wasn't the a game boy advanced or something but it had something similar looking the nintendo 3ds or the ds it might have been the three D. Yeah, it might have been the DS, but it looked very similar to this, at least in my estimates. It, I don't know though if if I like the control sticks on it. I mean, I I like it. If I'm going to play games and stuff, of course I'm going to use a, a controller. If I'm doing it on, on the console, but if I'm doing a PC, I prefer the mouse and keyboard because it's a lot easier for me. Yeah. I mean, the way the way it looks, it looks like it's got the touch pads mm -hmm. for you to like use a mouse kind of like a laptop's touchpad but it also has the 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 built-in controller so for those that are pc gamers that like to use controllers like i know a couple of them mm -hmm. you know it looks like it'd be almost like the best of both worlds right and you know it, it you can download your Steam games onto it. See, that's a plus. Amazing. Right. That's a plus because, you know, you and I play a lot of games that are on Steam. Oh, so, yes. Almost it, everything we play is through Steam. Right. And later later today, you know, probably jump into some some uh, ranch simulator and stuff like that as well for it. But some of the also specs... Of, exactly. And some of the funny things, okay, so some of the specs on this, I was looking at some of the specs today. I was looking at some of the people like Yay's cons and pros. The CPU is an AMD Zen 2. Okay, it's not too bad. It's a no, four core, eight thread, four times two. I get that. Clock speed is pretty fast, 2.4 to 3.5. I mean, depending on which one you get. Yeah. 
The GPU is an AMD RDNA 2. I'm not familiar with the RDNA 2. I'd have to do some research on it. Uh, the clock speed is 1 to 1 1.6 gigs, which isn't too bad. It's actually pretty good. Now, there's a there's differences in RAMs. There's Obviously. Yeah, there's the 16 gigs, which is yeah. DDR5s. Yes, that's the cheaper of the yes Steam Deck options now see that's where it gets complicated and that's where it becomes very pricey it's like how much storage do you want 64 gigs 256 gigs or do you want the half a terabyte to 512 gigs version but yeah they come with a price have you seen these prices i have seen these prices Ooh and let's just say i don't think i'll be getting one anytime soon <laughs> the price points for this now i don't know if this is set in stone of course this comes out later the year in this year fourth quarter 2021 is their supposed release of these that are coming out towards i guess towards christmas i would assume the holiday yeah, season around around december ish Oof. yeah uh the ram is 16 gigs of ddr5 which is pretty fast I can't believe, you know, can't complain there. Seven inch LCD touch screen. Now that's oh, what so makes it. Is it is touch, touch screen as well. Mm hmm. So that's interesting. The se seven inch LCD though. I mean, it's, it's all right. I guess the resolution though is interesting. It's, it's a 1280 by 800. So the ratio isn't too bad The refresh rate. Now here's a bummer for some people. It's only 60 hertz, so it's 60 frames per second, which isn't too bad. I mean, um, that's, that's what my monitors are for my computer. Right. So, I mean, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Right. Yeah. Refresh rate is 60. A lot of people, you know, a lot of a lot of streaming places today can't really handle anything faster than in 4K, as we talked about in past broadcasts about different resolutions and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and the refresh rates of things. Uh, the connectivity of it would be the Wi-Fi. You could do it either, you know, obviously a lot of things are today. Bluetooth as well. Uh, it has a display port, which is, now that's different. For something that's portable, it actually has a display port, 1.4 support. So you which can. USB type C, which I've seen a lot of things moving over to the USB-C. Yes. The USB-C now is the, like, go-to USB. You know, you, I mean, you, it's a great. My, I mean, my phone. <laughs> Like when I upgraded my phone, mm -hmm. they offered me, you know, this fast charging block because I upgraded to a phone that with my old charger would charge. It would be like a trickle charge. Right. And obviously, you know, the charger came with the phone, but the block did not. Right. I needed to get the block because the the USB for my charger was USB-C. Right, yes. So everything, it seems to be moving from regular USB or micro mm -hmm. into the USB Type-C. Right, yep, that's true. You have stereo speakers, you have a 3.5 millimeter jack, you have dual mics, which that's kind of interesting. That's pretty cool. And you can USB Type-C Bluetooth. So I, I guess I could say if I had... If I had a, a USB mic, maybe I could plug that bad boy into it. Like, you know, like one of my condenser mics or even, you know, an omnidirectional mic. Um, the 40 battery is 40 watts an hour. So it's basically, eh, you know, that's not too bad. The size of it, 11 by 7 by 4 by 6 by 1.8, which is pretty decent sized. If you've seen what it looks yeah. like, it almost looks like a tablet. It's it's, it's kind of like the Nintendo Switch, only a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it the screen looks about the same, but like the sides of the screen are a bit bigger than having a Joy Cons on the the Switch. So here comes the problem. Now here comes the price points. Now, for example, say if you downloaded a game, a lot of games today, as we talked about in a prior episode about the size of games and how big they are in the DVD, you know, the, the games today are on DVDs and then the, you know, disappearing of game CDs in general, you have a 64 gigabyte 
size storage bin for $399. I, I'm assuming that's US. So $399 uh, sure. US. And then if you want to go double that or almost triple that, 256 gigs will cost you a whopping $529 US. And if you want to go even bigger and you say, you know what, I want a half a terabyte. I want that kind of storage. Now you're talking $649 price point US. So I from, mean, if you think about it, those prices are really not that bad for that much storage. That's true, but... Because if you think about, like, an actual PC tower, mm -hmm. think about, like, your 500 gigs mm -hmm. is normally pretty expensive. It is, yeah. An M.2 or an SSD storage it can be kind of, exactly. you know, kind of high up there. If you get a two terabyte or even higher, you know, you're talking about that same price range, give or take. But also, see, the thing is, if you were to get the 64 gig mm -hmm. or any of them, actually, all three of the models offer a micro SD slot. Right. So you can put in a memory card and download what you want onto that memory card and switch it out. And you can just switch out and have all your games. The problem I would have with a 64 gig hard drive, and some can attest or agree or disagree, is a lot of games today usually start around 40 or 50 gigs minimum yeah. on size. And I'm talking just like we were talking last hour about Fortnite. Games like that, especially BRs, especially FPSs, those generally 50 to 100 gigs easily. Oh, easily. Sea of Thieves, Warzone, you know, Call of Duty Warzone. I don't know what Fortnite is, but I'm assuming it's around 50, 60 gigs. So right there, you're, you're in a pinch. Like you can only download or install one game. And if you know... If say for example you get short on storage on your PC, even your PC at home or even a Xbox or whatever, the closer you get to the storage maximum, the slower the system becomes because it has to churn through all that. It has no no particular place to put cache memory. It doesn't have any store. It's like I'm struggling, man. Like I can't get the visuals going because I've pushed my older PC to its breaking point almost where I think it had a half a terabyte and it was at like 495 or something total space used and I had half a gig or five gigs left or whatever it was. It was a crunch because it was slow motion. So that is kind of a disadvantage. Now, if you play games like, I don't know, maybe Minecraft or um, Trove or something like that, that's, you know, geared towards the younger market. I could see it. I could see getting that. But if I wanted to go gusto and if I wanted to, I would have to go at least the middleman, 256. That would be my starting point as an average, you know, gamer, PC gamer slash console gamer myself, because it would be a lot easier for me to store at least a game, game and a half or uh, two games and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I don't know. It would be, eh, eh, I don't know. It's going to be interesting how that pops out though. <clears throat> Um, some of the other things too, they were talking about on it, it has a, a speedy NVMe SSD. So that's kind of good. It could spend with upwards of 3000 megabits per second. That's pretty fast considering this little thing is a portable. Exactly. But yeah. the problem that I'm seeing so far with this is like, like you said, when it comes to battery life. Right. It's, it's probably only going to give you, depending on what games you want to play, mm -hmm. anywhere like two to eight hours. So you're constantly going to be charging this thing. Yes. Like it's, it's going to be a constant thing. And, and the fact that, you know, it says that the, the steam deck has a dock for it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't come with it. So that's a whole separate purchase just to be able to hook it up to your TV or your monitor. So wait a minute, if I were to buy the middleman, if I'm going to spend, you know, an X amount of money on it, like say, for example, 529 bucks as the retail price US for the 256 gigabytes of storage, I have to buy that separately. 
Yes, you have to buy the dock separately. Ooh wee! Now I, I that's that's gonna be an off put to a lot of people. That's gonna be a bitter pill to swallow for a lot of people who are like, well, hmm. I mean, if you think about it, yes, it is a great concept. Mm-hmm. But for that price, I could go out and buy a switch that comes with the dock, mm-hmm. or I can go and get more RAM or another SSD drive for my computer. I can go and get more space for my computer. Granted, I won't be able to take it with me. Right. But for someone who doesn't leave the house unless I have to. Right. I'm thinking, you know, the Switch is probably going to be the better option for right. a portable gaming system. I could see if I was, yeah, if I was a business person, if I was living hotel to hotel or, you know, staying in hotels and stuff like this, if I had the advantage of doing that or disadvantage, depending on what, it, you know, which your job is, I could see that. I could see this game, this Steam Deck would be something, you know, uh, I I would choose to do or use. But as you mentioned with the Switch and stuff like this, for those people who are staying at home and for those people whose lives have changed due to the 2020, I could see the Switch. There's supposed to be a newer Switch that's supposed to be coming out too, but that's a whole different story. I think this is actually competition between the two. Yes. They want to make it more portable. They want to make your PC, instead of having a laptop, they want you to get more portable. Things are starting to get smaller again. And if you which, remember... Which I understand that. Mm-hmm. That's great and stuff. But if you're going to make a product like this, mm-hmm. you have to make sure you're not selling it piece by piece. Right. Because if I'm, if for some reason I do need to leave and say, you know, it's hurricane season. Say right. I was to get one of these and I need to go to a hotel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or go to a shelter, or go somewhere away from home. Right. I mean, I have a Switch Lite, Mm -hmm. which is not a regular Switch, but it's it's almost the same concept. I wouldn't want to have to buy the Steam Deck itself, and then not be able to dock it wherever I'm going. Right. I would want all of that in one box rather than making two separate purchases. I don't, I don't and have them come in two separate boxes. One, that's a waste of that's a waste of boxes. Mm-hmm. That's more cardboard going to a landfill because not everybody recycles. That's more clutter. That's more, you know, in the cost of shipping. Oh, yeah, definitely. Just put it all in one box and (laughs) just send them together. Because I I don't even, they don't even have, like, a price for the dock yet. And to be fair, I mean, in my guesstimate, if I'm, if I'm spending, okay, so if I'm dishing out $399, which is the minimum retail price, supposedly at time of recording, three hundred ninety nine dollars for the minimum sixty four gigs. Okay, so that's the opening price point. I would expect it. I mean, if I'm paying that kind of cash I, out the door, I would assume it would come with the the components needed to say because if it's got a seven inch screen and it weighs almost a pound and a half, I mean, that's not a very big screen to look at. I would immediately want to exactly. plug in different things into it and, and dock it to where I could do additional things with it because you would figure it would go with it. So why become so greedy and sit there and say, okay, we're going to charge for this separately when I'm charging the average consumer $399 just as my opening point PowerPoint or price point. I'm like, that's kind of crazy. I mean, they haven't even revealed how much it's going to cost or when it's going to be available to purchase. Right. Which I, again, I think, you know, if you're going to, if, if you're going to put out that kind of money for a portable PC, Mm -hmm. 
you need to have all your ducks together. You need to have all the pieces that go with it together, and they need to be released together. I mean, granted, I know, you know, it's not going to start shipping until December. Right. But, come on. Valve needs to think this through. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because at this point, like you said, it, it sounds kind of greedy that they're not putting the dock with it. Mm-hmm. I and agree. They haven't even got a price on it yet. Now, see, here's the thing, too, with it. It runs. It's, this kind of reminds me of the Chrome. You ever play with a, a, a uh, OS system of Chromes, like a Chromebook? You ever, do you ever? I, I have used a Chromebook. Okay. I've used the, the Mac OS. Right. Well, I see, didn't like it as much as Windows. The Stream Deck will run on a new version of the Steam's OS, their operating system, Valve's link-based operating system. But you'll be able to play with Windows games that don't have the official Linux support using the compatibility tech from Valve called Proton. Or if you really just want to, you can just uninstall the Steam OS and just install Windows altogether for it. That's kind of like how Chrome is. Chrome is, you can put Linux on it. You can put various things on it. I don't think it runs, at least the, the Chromebook I have does not run Windows stuff. I, like I couldn't put, I couldn't put Studio OBS on it if I wanted to. What I originally wanted to do was my old laptop, when I game with that one, I wanted to have the, I wanted to have those two tied together so I could put my gaming PC, which was my old laptop, would be the workhorse and I would stream it directly off the Chromebook. That way I would be able to put studio OBS and stuff. So it put less strain on the old PC. Now I think the newer Chromebooks do run windows OS or they do have the capabilities of doing it, but the model I have right now does not. So that's kind of interesting. The, you have the steam OS, their operating system it basically kind of reminds me of, of Chrome. And then you can uninstall that totally and just install the Windows if you so desire. But does that mean you have to spend additional money to get the key for that? A licensing, because you know, all computers, you gotta have the you gotta purchase a Windows license for it to, you know, install and stuff like that. Uh is it bigger than the Switch? Yes, it is. People have been wondering that too. Is it bigger by not very by much? But it no, is. It, it's it's only about a, it's only a couple inches wider and about a half an inch taller. Mm-hmm. But it is thicker, so it's more like holding an actual controller in your hand, and it's a little bit heavier because well, it's a gaming PC in your hands. Right. So there's going to be more hardware inside of it. It'd be more interesting to see, like, if you are able to now. Th- now, this will make it or break it too for some of those people. If it's considered versus, if it's considered a portable PC versus a standard new console, like people are confusing it. Will I be able to go under the hood? Will I be able to like tweak things where I could say, okay, maybe I want to add more RAM to it. Or is it just because of the, is it going to be limited because of the motherboard that it's installed on? I don't remember reading what the, the motherboard was. Uh, quickly look and see. Uh, AMD Z Zen 2. So it might be able to tweak it or not. I'm not sure. But this thing sounds like it's basically a portable PC that you can play just about damn near everything. So you don't need a, you don't need it to, you don't need an emulator to say if I wanted to play this to this or I, so basically it's kind of a, a hodgepodge of everything. If I want to play this game, I could play it on here. If I wanted to do this game, even though that's on this console, I can do it. So there's some pluses and minuses on it, but you touch base though for the battery life on this thing is not that good. The only thing I'm going to say, you know, if you're going to buy one of these, mm-hmm. test it out. Make sure you have a charger with you at all times because you don't want to be in the middle of a, a mission on, I don't know, any any game on Steam. You don't want to be in the middle of doing something and then mm. it just dies on you. Right. It, if, if you're playing something like Portal, maybe Portal 2, you know, mm-hmm. you can play that 
probably for like four hours because it's not something a At, super fast pace that's going to drain your battery out. Right. Not as, as, as graphic intensive or as fast uh-huh. moving and stuff. Right. Right. And then, and then of course, if you limit your frames, you could probably get another hour, two hours out of it. Ooh, yeah. The dreaded backwards limitations. Uh-huh. If I'm watching a movie, I could see that, you know, because movies is 24 frames a second. So I could see it if I limited, dropped it to 30 frames, I would be in movie land. Yeah, but th- that's not what this is for, though. They, right. They're making this so you can play your games while you're away from your home. Right. You're away from your gaming PC or just a regular PC that you play games on. I don't think they're actually thinking this through properly. Do you think it's rushed? Do you think they're rushing it just to get it out there? I kind of do because, I mean, this is honestly, today is the first I've heard about it. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm seeing that, you know, you can pre-order it today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you wanted to spend Pre-order the money. started at 10 a.m. at Pacific time. So that's... One o'clock Eastern. Yep, just a couple hours ago. Yeah, it literally just started today. But it's. And, a- I mean, yeah, it's great that you can reserve a Steam Deck if you only put down like a five dollar deposit, or you can put down however much deposit. Mm-hmm. And that'll go towards the cost. But I feel like you know, I'm just now hearing about it. It's supposed to ship out in five months that's true yeah there's there's a bit of a wait between not i mean there is a bit of a wait right but i feel like they're trying to rush it and push it out really fast the sad thing is is if this is the permanent price points if they're going to keep these price points as it is now say for example in two months from now say instead of 3.99 it's uh, 200 so it's 199 so it dropped 100 bucks what about the people who have spent the 399 now are they going to get the refund of the hundred dollars back to them because they pre-ordered at a locked price i or- would sure hope so because that <laughs> would really make me mad if i spent 300 dollars and it dropped oh yeah or even 400 i mean think about the price points are pretty steep considering the low yeah. For me, honestly, it, it, you mentioned about, you know, PCs and stuff right now, towers, you know, and, and the M.2, the storage bin, the SSDs and stuff like that. I have an uh, M.2 in my computer and I also have an external. So I have two SSDs that are running side by side, each in my computer. And then I have the, um, I guess, well, I guess I have three of them. I have the one and I have two others. I have a D drive, C drive, and, uh, is a C drive, D drive, and G drive. So I have three different drives on mine. But see, the problem with this too, well, the, the plus about it is it's an open platform. Basically, it means you can install Windows, you can do the Steam Deck, and even install their games and storefronts of the games, like from the Epic Store or the game Xbox Game Pass. So I could see the plus like that. If I wanted to make it as a portable PC, and if I say, hey, I have a Steam game or a epic game that I want to play right now. I don't have to be limited to being at home on my tower or my laptop. I can just say, pull this out, pull out the steam deck. Boom. There you go. It's, it's like one of those knives, you know, those ones that have all the utility knife that has like 200 different things that put together into it. Yep. I could see that, but eh, how is it going to work though? I mean, how's this? How well are like non-Steam games going to work on this? That's the problem. Because That's again, a big question. The Steam OS on it, you can wipe it. You can totally wipe it and install your own version of Windows. But mm, I don't know. But when I when I think about you know when I buy something mm-hmm. like when I bought my computer, I paid for the operating system that's on it. Right which was Windows. With this, I feel like if you buy it and then wipe the operating system, what is it going to mess up? 
Right. That's true. Yeah, you're right. Like, say if I install, like I have my games right now on my PC, and if I port them or cloud them over to the new Steam, excuse me, Steam Deck, and if something goes terribly wrong on the Steam Deck, like if it blue screens or whatever, am I going to now destroy those files or corrupt those Mm -hmm. files when I try to go back onto my PC? Exactly. See, I could see that. I wouldn't want to wipe the OS off of it Mm -hmm. and then mess everything else up. I feel like if you're going to get it and if that's what you want to do, that's great, fine, and dandy. You do what you got to do. Right. Me, personally, I'm not super tech savvy. I I know my basic stuff. Okay. I'm not going to mess with something that I, one, just came out, two, I know nothing about. Right. And I'm not going to put it at risk, especially paying those prices. I'm I'm not going to risk it. It was like... So, when it comes to, like, playing other games that aren't Steam exclusives, like, if you play something on Epic, or, like, Minecraft download it from Mojang how how well is it actually going to run right you don't have windows that is true i i would love to see just as an example i as time progresses i'm sure we'll get like you know we'll we'll, we'll get bench marks on tests and stuff i'm kind of curious it's just one of those things that you don't know what you're putting your money into at the moment in time because it's just been announced. I'm really, I'm really curious to see like with the benchmarks on it, when it, when it, as time progresses, Fufu will probably see benchmarks because you know, people who are the average PC person who knows a little bit more than us in general Mm -hmm. will want to see some of the things like, okay, how does it stack up the desktop and, and hardware from a laptop? How is it in speed? processing speed the memory speed the test they yeah they gave us all these te- you know they gave us all this information about this this system you know the gpu the amd rdna2 the but clock they speed have, they haven't given us any kind of like video visualization yeah to show us what it does how fast it goes how the graphics actually look you know all we've got is pictures out of the gate with ram of 16 16- doctor ram of 16 gigs isn't bad a lot of times they start you off with eight gigs Uh, on a a normal pc at least from my knowledge they start you off at eight gigs now eight gigs is the minimum a lot of streaming sites including twitch i believe they want Mm -hmm. you to start off at as eight gigs memory as minimum you know 60 hertz again refresh speed not too bad the clock speed of the gpu is 1 to 1.6 gigahertz which is not bad for the clock for the gpu uh the clock speed for the computer though almost is as fast if not the same based on their things as fast as some of the today's computers so it's 2.4 to 3.5 gigahertz which is fast yeah, you know, that's very fast. So, but I'm still, I, I'd like to see what it does. I'm, I'm, expectations are kind of high on it, but I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of have mixed feelings on this. I mean, I, I'm excited to see what they release in the future mm-hmm. as far as the Steam Deck goes. But it's also one of those things that I'm really nervous that they're trying to get more money out of it than it's actually worth. Yeah, I could see. I mean, it could be a viable option for people who are looking to buy a new rig, you know, and and not just for people who. Are, I mean, I could see it if, if, if this would be a, a, an entry point for a person who wants a PC who can't afford a thousand dollar PC. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and it has AMD in it, and so does the Xbox. So does I believe the PlayStation. They're all AMD, the Ryzen's or AMD's. So. That right there tells me that, you know, unless they're windowed tailored, they're, they're pretty, AMD is really good. I think I have an AMD computer myself. I don't have a, 
I don't have an Intel bill because that's like the only two go to's is Intel or AMD. Which one do you want? Do you want more frames or do you want more processing speed? But the thing with the, the PC for the charger, though, that's that's going to be an issue, too. Is it going to get hot? Is it going to get to the point where it becomes unusable while, unusable while you're playing a game because it's getting too warm? Will it freeze? Will it turn off automatically? Are there fans? It doesn't, it doesn't say anything about cooling or fans or any of that. Exactly. It's more based on resolution, the, the res, the refresh, the audio. But it didn't say anything about a fan. Or what kind of cooling does it have? And now, I, as as it is, it's kind of like a Nintendo Switch in size and look. So I don't think there's a big fan on it, but who knows? You know, I they, mean, it, it's got little spots on the front that could be speakers. But yeah. It also, it could be fans. And I know on the back of it, it's got holes that look like maybe they're fans. But it's hmm. not telling you anything about it. See, another thing, too, and I'm thinking outside the box. Say, for example, to keep pushing. They keep pushing where it is where they have Steam as an OS. But you can erase the Steam and you can put in Windows. Windows, if you do, if you recall, basically is on everything. Everything that runs outside of Linux or, you know, anything out of the OS that doesn't cover Magic Hat, etc., etc. But you think about it, all the AAA games run on Windows. Mm -hmm. So maybe, just maybe, that's what they, they, they're pushing that. That's just my assumption. Maybe they're pushing it for other things, you know. But it makes you wonder, if you have this OS, it's by Steam... You have your own operating system specific for this thing, but you know what? Yeah. You can put in the competitors, you know, you can put it in their program, their software, and then it's okay. It'll be able to run it, no problem. And it should because it's an AMD. So AMD can run just about anything pretty much you throw at it. You know, Linux, it can throw, um, you know, it can hold Windows. It can hold, well, Steam itself. So it, it can hold numerous yeah. different things of zero problems. They have the thing called Proton, which is the operating thing for the Steam Deck. But, you know, for games like for on the OS for like Steam OS, Linux and stuff like that. So it's not really, it, it, you have the option. Do you want to erase this stuff or do you want to keep the OS? It's okay. I can understand that. Yeah, I mean, it's all based on preference, mm -hmm. obviously. But me personally, I would just leave it as is and get used to it that way rather than try and mess with anything and mess it up. Right. Well, I mean, the, the Steam OS, you still have to, like I said, it, it can run a good percent of the games that you'll probably put onto it if, it's, if you consider it as a portable PC. But even some of the other games that are required mostly you'll have to put windows on it can you switch yeah. between the steam os and windows can a, a the emulator on it i don't know there are some things where like on computers you can switch the windows and then if i want to turn off windows i can go into this or linux or whatever so you have the option of doing that but is that going to be a thing where you can either you have to wipe the Steam OS to make Windows on it? Because Windows is fairly big too. That's another thing you got to consider. Yeah. The, you also, yeah, exactly. You have to consider you're buying, if you get the, the $400 one, mm -hmm. you got to think you're not, you're paying for the 64 gigs. Right. But you don't know how big the operating system is. You True. don't know how big updates and stuff are going to be for it. That's true so, too. Unless you're using an actual micro SD card, you don't know if you're going to be able to even have a good game on there. You make very valid points. The, you have the starting point, the low end of the, um, the storage 64 gigs, I believe it was. Minimum. So you figure if Windows, I don't know if Windows is like 10, 15 gigs on its own, then you have these updates. 
I know it, it erases the old and, you know, it, it clears the, it, it erases the old and replaces it with new files. I get that, but it still holds the space. You can still actually, it still caches it. So you have to erase that. Are you going to have the option to defrag it? Now, SSDs, you really don't defrag, but you optimize. So in other words, it just completely wipes it. We've talked about this on a prior podcast about, you know, the hard disk versus the SSD solid state drive, how they read and write. It's different. You don't have a needle that reads like you do on an HDD versus the SSD is a laser point and it just erases as it goes. So it kind of wipes it away like an etch sketch if you know what that is. I see. It's kind of curious. I'm kind of curious to see how our that age is. is showing with that comment, cactus. What's that? I said our age is showing with that last comment, cactus. <laughs> but here's the thing, too. Do you do you thank Nintendo? Because Nintendo Switch kind of they they put it back on these portable gaming systems. They kind of put it back on the market. Because if you look at like Xbox, it's a console. It's fairly large. You have to set it down, you know, in front of the TV or put it somewhere where it's close by where you can plug in USB the controllers or wireless, whatever it is, but it still has to be near the TV to plug into the back, etc., etc. Now Nintendo switch kind of has the dock port. It has that on it where you can actually stream it directly into your, or put it into the monitors, into your TV or whatever the case it is. No problems. It's kind of portable itself. So do we thank Nintendo? Do we appreciate Nintendo and them doing it? They like they, a new breath of fresh air that came into the, the platform because it was a, a another total different step or direction versus the consoles where they have to be, I guess, like door stoppers in a sense. Mm. I mean, I, like I said earlier, I just, I feel like they're trying to push it out a little too fast. Mm. I, I, I would love to see some more information on it. Right. But I, I seriously think they're they're trying to be fast about it. I think they're trying to push it out because of competition. And I think they need to just – they've got a great idea right here. They really right. do. But they need to slow it down, dial it back a little, and make sure that when it comes out, it's good to go. Now, Valve has had some pluses and minuses over the years on different things. They've tried different, oh, yeah. they've tried different things where they were trying to get into the business of, of gaming platforms or or consoles in a sense. But they do have the Valve Index, which is a VR headset, which is one of the I think it's like one of the, the best in the market. I know there's the Oculus and stuff, but I've heard the mm-hmm. Valve Index is one of the best VR headsets out there. So they've hit a home run with that and then some. It's a grand slam, if you will. But I'm still kind of curious. You know, a lot of people are saying that it might fail. The power, the price point's too high. I, I, I the price point to me is kind of high. Yeah, especially like looking at the actual website looking at what comes with each i think it it's a little too high cuz mm-hmm. if you if you think about it the 399 you only get 64 gigs and the only thing it comes with is a charger and a carrying case right for $400 oof i mean the the most expensive one is mm-hmm. the 512 gigs it's got the fastest storage which is great it's got the premium anti-glare glass which i think should be on all of them Mm -hmm. especially if you're looking to make it like a pc a lot of your computer monitors have the anti-glare yes yeah i'm glad they do because you know i wear for me personally i wear blue blockers Mm -hmm. i wear the glasses i wear are blue blockers my screen might have blue blocking capabilities and we talked about this before with harley because she would sit there and say oh i can see things bright you know and i can't see poop on it Mm -hmm. but you know it it, it, it's good to have that because it protects your eyes they say the blue is is bad for your eyesight especially when it comes to the you know when you're going to bed and stuff yeah yeah i mean it's got the carrying case, which is an exclusive carrying case for that $650 one. 
Right. Plus you get an exclusive Steam community profile bundle. I'm not sure what that is. But for the 529 and the 649, they both get the exclusive Steam community profile bundle. But for the most expensive one, you also get like a virtual keyboard theme, which I'm, again, not sure what that means. But yeah. for the prices, I think it should have more with it, like the dock for mm-hmm. first. First thing I'm going to throw out there, Valve, if you're listening, include the dock. Because that's kind of ridiculous that you're going to have to pay a whole separate price for something that should come with it. Do you think in the future or between now and December, do you think they'll include that? Do you think they'll just say, well, maybe we won't include the dock, but we will, we'll add this to it, which is similar to the dock, but not just many options. Uh, I mean, I'm hoping, you know, Mm -hmm. that they'll just include the dock, you know, especially if, by December the price drops maybe drop the price and then move it up maybe 20 bucks for the dock you know instead of making it $400 for just the handheld PC bring it down maybe like $199 make it I'll even say go go like $250 for the dock included if you go the 199 that's an extra that's an extra 50 bucks so yeah i can deal with that as long as it comes with the dock so make it a a, an additional fee within you know reason to add the whole overall price and it comes in the same box you don't have to worry about different shipping times you don't have to worry about different shipping fees Hmm. just put it all together Make it one price mm-hmm. for everything all together. That way, you know, say, you know, if I was to get it, I would have the carrying case, I would have the dock, I would have the charger. All in one bag. And I wouldn't I wouldn't have to, you know, because the dock's not even out yet. Well, right. neither is this, but they at least have a set time frame for this. They don't have a set time frame for the dock. Which, how are you gonna, how are you gonna sell something that there's a dock with? Right. Sell it separately and not give a release date for the dock. They're even putting now. This is even a catch twenty two too. But I can kind of understand. It's kind of a guarantee, like a stamp of approval. The when you order, when you reserve one of these things, there is a reservation fee. So basically what it, the reservation fee or the main reason for it is in, or to ensure that they, while well, the orders are fair and processed for customers when Steam Deck inventory becomes available. So they give a, basically it's like, okay, we get a signal or intent to purchase. When you, when you purchase something, it's like, okay, it, it will supply, it will balance the supply chain inventory and they'll figure, okay, well, if there's this market and stuff like this, then we can, you know, it's 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 a lot faster, I guess, for the 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 steam for themselves to do it. It's a five dollar reservation. So what it means basically is this attracts the five so five dollars down today, and you can pre-order this bad boy, the Steam Deck, and it supposedly uh comes out oh you oh yes, you had to purchase on Steam. You have to make a requirement to reserve. They've added a requirement that reserver has made a purchase on Steam prior to June 2021 or for the first 48 hours of the reservation availability. So in other words, you have to be a Steam person. You've at least have had to buy one thing on their Steam store yeah, to be eligible. Prior to last month. Now that's kind of like, okay. I don't think Windows I mean, did something like that, but... I understand. I I kind of understand that because they want people that actually use Steam mm-hmm. to use this. Right. But what about people who, you know, they've been on Steam for a long time and they've had games gifted to them rather than them actually buying the game? Right. 
because they didn't have the money for the game prior to last month. I right. I could see. Yeah, I I could see. Well, that would just be for the like that guarantees you a pre-purchase order. However, if you don't have the money today, if you can't reserve it right now, and but you would like to purchase the Steam Deck in the future, you can add it to your wish list, and Steam will notify you when it is available for general yeah. pur- purchases, which is good. So they'll give you like a, a heads up when they say, okay, we've gotten this many reserves. Now we can do for the general public. So if you can't do it today, if you can't reserve, as you mentioned, if you got games for free and never purchased anything prior to June 2021, then you can go that route and say, okay, I'm going to do it this way instead. But it'll take longer because they're doing reservations right now. They're doing reserves for it. And And another thing, like, if you do reserve the system, mm-hmm. you can cancel your reservation within 30 days. Right. And, but the thing is, is, you know, say I put like $100 down. Right. That reservation, if I cancel it, it won't go back into my bank account where it came from. It'll go into my Steam wallet. Okay. What if I needed that money back in my bank account for say like a bill or something right what if something unexpectedly pops up like something happens with the car and i need that money back in my my bank account rather than putting it on steam for games you won't be able to exactly i don't i don't like that aspect granted yeah if it's five dollars if it's fifteen dollars i can understand that Right. But if it's more than that, it should go back to the bank account. That would be that would be smart, but it's that catch twenty two where they're like, well, you know, it's a Steam purchase now; it goes into your wallet. So I guess the best advice would be is if put money aside in a Steam wallet that you know that you can just toss around, and it's not going to go towards like an emergency situation or any kind of thing like that. So that way. You know, put fifty dollars into it today. Maybe next week when you get paid, or the following week, put another hundred bucks into it. So, so stuff like that. I used to put like five or ten dollars in my Steam account. In fact, I've had some people even add money into my Steam account so I can get games before they started gifting me games, exactly. which is another way you can do it. You know, it's another angle of of getting somebody a game or something in the future from Steam. So I can see it like that. You know. You can only purchase two, like say, for example, what if I decided I wanted the bigger 256 gig versus the 64 gig, but I paid already for the 64. So I I guaranteed my reservation for the 64, but I wanted to upgrade, you know, a week from today. Well, unfortunately, you will not be able to do that. You can only Uh purchase that Steam Deck model that you have reserved. And you can only reserve one Steam Deck. Right. Per, per Steam account. But with the whole cancellation, I, I did find out that if it's before 30 days, it will be refunded to whatever payment method you used. Okay. But if it's after, it'll go into your Steam wallet. Okay. So you have a grace period of time. That's that's a little bit better. Like, right. That's a that's, uh, more understandable. Right. But again, if I put down that much money and I, I need it back and say, say like 30 days from right now, it'd be 355, 30 days from now. Right. If it has, if it, if it goes to technicalities at or say I, I order it eleven fifty nine, mm-hmm. or reserve it, and then it hits midnight when I'm getting ready to go in and cancel it. That's technically thirty one days, and it would have to go back to my Steam wallet, which is I would rather them just say, hey, you know, if you cancel it, we'll just put it back where you paid from. Right. Rather than put it towards Steam. Because, like I said, things happen. Things are unexpected. 
if something unexpected was to happen and you needed that money and it's over the 30 days, you're still not going to get that money back. In a sense, you are. Right. But you're not going to be able to use it for what you need to use it for. Right. Initially, exactly. So you're pretty much SOL out of that one. To a degree, I guess, in a sense. But here's the thing, too. Quickly, before we go into our next break, into the third hour of the Megabyte podcast. The thing I found interesting, too, is it's kind of like, you know how it is if you're laying in bed and if you're playing on your tablet and stuff, you're holding it above your head. So it's going to be kind of like that in a sense. They'll be able to play all the Steam games you have, as you mentioned, because those are all basically saved in the cloud. We talked about the cloud on a prior uh, episode of the podcast uh, about saves and stuff like that. So that's a plus. You can wipe out the OS, the Steam OS. You could totally wipe it out, put it into your Windows. If you so desire, put in a Windows operating system. Uh, if you drop this thing on your face, that's going to be a hurting like hell. Because sometimes, you know, if I'm look, looking at my laptop and I, I, it starts making me sleepy, I'm sorry, my, my uh, tablet, if I'm holding it and I'm looking at it, like if I'm on the couch laying down, if it falls in your face, it's going to hurt. Exactly. <laughs> But it's going to be interesting, though, to see how this plays out. People are more, it's a big topic right now. The Steam Deck by Valve, the creators of, uh, of the Steam Deck is Valve. Uh, it's going to be a really interesting. The PowerPoints, again, the prices for it uh, are, are pretty steep for 64 gigs. It's not too bad, but it's kind of steep. $399 as the opening bid or opening price, I guess, of US. 529 for the 256 gig and 649 for the 512 gigabytes, which is kind of, kind of an ouch, especially in this te- uh, today's market. Exactly. Especially after everything that happened in 2020 with people losing their jobs. That is a ridiculous amount of money. Yes, it is. Coming up on the third hour, we're going to be talking about Space Jam 2. We're going to talk about the reviews. It's not really doing good. In the movies right now. But we'll get to that. Especially with how the first one was. Exactly. Different celebrities. Next gen versus Gen X. We'll see how that goes in the next hour here. We're going to take a short break. We will be back in a moment. Stay tuned. 1996 standalone sequel to Space Jam. Now, are you familiar with Space Jam, Fufu? Yes. Oh, my God. This movie is a year younger than I am, or uh-huh. two years, sorry. I'm trying to make myself younger than I am, but <laughs> I grew up watching this movie. Yeah. And I've even showed this movie to my child. Right. It's one of those movies that has a special place in my heart. Are you talking the, the very first one, right? With Bugs? Yes, the okay. original Space Jam. Obviously, it was based by based on Looney Tunes, which is Warner Brothers. We, we all know that. The very first one back in 1996, that's a hell of a long time ago, considering the, the distance and time that it took for them to make a quote-unquote sequel. Yes, that, that is a very long time. To, that's what, 25 years? It's close to, yeah, I would say about 25 years. Two different directors. Yeah. Uh, Joe Pitka was the very first uh, for Space Jam was the director. And on this one was uh, Malcolm D. Lee was the uh, director of it. Now, Space Jam 1, some interesting notes on this particular movie. It had, of course, MJ, Michael Jordan, and Billy West. It had D. Bradley Baker, Wayne Knight. So it had Teresa uh, Wayne Knight. I'm really surprised. But yes, he was in there. And of course, Danny DeVito. Told a different cast, but of course, loves Danny DeVito. Exactly, and, and the big person then was, of course, Michael Jordan. Number twenty-three. Everybody knows him. You know, I think it is number twenty-three. Everybody knows him as who he was. Space Jam. Now the new legacy, Space Jam Two, kind of the same premise in a sense, but it has a. Uh, it was directed by Michael D. I'm sorry, Malcolm D. Lee serving as a standalone sequel to Space Jam. Uh, It was the very first theatrical release film to feature the Looney Tunes character since Looney Tunes back in action 
which took place in 2003. So that was 18 years ago on its own yeah, right. That, that was also a long time ago. Of live action, traditional hand-drawn animation. So they actually had people drawing versus CG, which is kind of good in a sense. So, But they did also have 3D CGI, CGI effects. CGI effects, so. yeah. LeBron James is in this one. So he's the Michael Jordan of, of this gen, I guess you will. A lot of people know who LeBron James is. The only reason LeBron James is the star in this one is because Michael Jordan actually refused to return. Really? For this one. Yes. Hmm. Now that's interesting. Do you think about it, you had a big highlight, big heyday back then? Back then, yeah. Space Jam's was running time was eighty eight minutes. It had a uh, budget of eighty million dollars. That's a lot of money. Box oh, office, yeah. it made double, almost tripled. Actually, it made triple the amount of its return. Budget was eighty million dollars. It made two hundred and fifty point two million dollars at the box office. That's global global distribution global uh sales now if you flip that over to the current current one the space jam a new legacy 115 minute run time it's a 150 million dollar budget which almost doubles the budget from back then from 1996 the box office sales so far to date from time of recording was $194,073. That's uh that's pretty low considering compared to the original Space Jam, yes. Now, the release date was in LA was July 12th. So today it just came out today, the 16th um, of July. So you can watch it in theaters or you can watch it on HBO Max mm -hmm. because I know HBO Max does a lot of the movies that are in the theaters right now as well. So basically the premise for this one versus the, the NBA or sorry, the space jam we know and loved so much growing up as, as our generation. Uh, this one had both of his sons, LeBron wished that his sons would follow in his footsteps. In other words, becoming a basketball player and stuff like that, a basketball champion the one child is a prodigy in computer software instead of dreams of becoming a video game developer. <laughs> There's a shocker right there, right? Everything is video games today, so everybody can, quote unquote, relate to game developing and or anything in the gaming industry. Um, the wife of the person in the movie, LeBron's wife, advises him to respect Dom's wishes while showing an interest in Dom's game. And he discovered a glitch in his character after performing a specific move, which causes the character to be deleted. Which is, well, that's kind of weird. <laughs> it's not a good glitch, that's for sure. <laughs> um, so they became, they, they were invited to the Warner Brothers Studios and offered to become a movie star. LeBron's to miss the idea. I don't want to give all the details of the movie. Yeah. But in his, you know, in a sense, he... he Finds Bugs Bunny, and then here we are with Marvin the Martian. Uh, there is, I think, even DC Comics are in it. Harry Potter, of all things. Oh, wow. In the Game of Thrones to locate and recruit the rest of the Looney Tunes, such as Daffy Duck, Lola. I wasn't a big fan of Lola. She came around later, I think it was. Yep. She came in when they were their heyday in the 90s, if I'm not, or 2000s. Porky Pig. The main ones that I'm excited to see back in is obviously Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, Marvin the Martian, and you got um, you got Sylvester and Tweety, you got the Tasmanian Devil, you got <laughs> the, the originals. Right, space compensatory. Yes, yeah, so you have the the Martian, uh, Marvin the Martian, of course, Sylvester. Now I don't, I've seen some of the commercial just for the the trailer for this for this particular movie, and it seemed like they were kind of over pushing it for today. Like they had like rap in it, you know. Like, but I guess yeah, they they've got a lot of you know not my kind of <laughs> music. Yeah, yeah. But see, that's that's the thing too. It's like I know they did probably something like that from. I would have to rewatch Space Jam to, to kind of see how it it played not too long ago, like a two three months ago, locally, yeah. 
And I, I, I just kind of flipped through. I'm like, okay, I've seen it. You know, this is 96. Graphics weren't bad. Green screening was pretty yeah. decent. But even back then, technology was in its infancy stages of green screening and stuff. You know, we could thank Star Wars for basically the green screening we have today. But yes, the different things of LeBron. He's a fictionalized version of himself, obviously. Uh, you have uh, Sonequa Martin Green. I'm not familiar and with it, her. If you've watched The Walking Dead, you know who she is. Oh, she's also from Star Trek Discovery. That's where she I've, ties I've, in. I've never watched Star Trek, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> I know her as Sasha from The Walking Dead. Okay. But that's just me. Like, like I said on, you know, our zombie hour on one of the previous episodes. I loved The Walking Dead. That's where I know her from. That's where she, so that's that's a very familiar face for me. What, what was the name of that person she played? She played as Sasha. As Sasha, that's right. Okay, that's who I was thinking of. Uh, Je- um, Jeffrey Allen Bergman. Remember him? He is the voice of. Well, he does several. He does Bunny, Bugs Bunny. He does Sylvester. He does Yosemite Sam. He also did Fred Flintstone and Yogi Bear. Not the the later ones, but. I mean, he of course is a well-known actor for his his voices. You know, he did the, yep. the Pillsbury Doughboy, Daffy Duck, as I mentioned. And he's done lots of voices, so he's really familiar. And he came back. He did the voice casting of it. I don't know if he was in the Space Jam the original. He might have been, uh, but it's very very possible. Uh, the voice cast Billy West. Okay, Bill Billy West did the voices. Uh, for Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fun, Fudd, which poor Elmer, you know, he always gets, <laughs> he always gets, uh, he never gets the the wabbit, if you will. Um, Lola was by Zendaya. Zendaya. Yes, Zendaya is for the newer generation. They, you hear that name, you know that name. She's, right. She started out on Disney. She did. She began as her child model, right? She was a um She was a child model. She's now a singer, actor. You know, she's she's gotten her name out there. So she's pretty well known. So they they okay. do have quite a few big top notch people that, you know, you and I would know or some of the current gen would know. Um but you know, the the Tweety Bird and stuff like this. I I can't, you know, they they planned a sequel as early as 1996, so when it first came out, they thought, okay, this would be kind of interesting to do a Space Jam 2 um, involving a new basketball competition between Michael Jordan and Looney Tunes and, you know, the new villains and stuff. If you watch the old one, it was kind of cheesy with the, the, you know, but it, it was all right. I wonder how that compares to today, you know. um. They were trying to redevelop it as Spy Jam. It was the star Jackie Can- uh, Jackie Chan in a different script entirely. Can you imagine Jackie Chan I, playing it? I could, honestly. I could see, you know, Jackie Chan with the, the Looney Tunes gang <laughs> being all spies and stuff. They also wanted to put a... Uh, the studio was also planning to make it a to another film or a planning a film titled Race Jam. Which would star uh, the infamous Jeff Gordon, of course, the NASCAR racer, professional racer. Yep. Which that would have been kind of interesting, but then that would that look like cars? You know, uh, I mean, yes and no, because hmm. you know, yeah, it have the whole NASCAR theme to it, mm-hmm. which everyone knows NASCAR, whether you watch it or not. It I is know growing very up, well my mom watched NASCAR every Sunday. Really? It was a religious thing. <laughs> every every NASCAR race that was on, she watched. And I believe she still watches it to this day. So hmm. I could I could understand the the uh the race aspect to it. Right. And I think that kind I honestly think I would watch a race jam because, you know, I'm not a big fan of Jeff Gordon, but to see how the Looney Tunes would turn 
NASCAR into something funny mm-hmm. and something silly and creative and to see what they could do with that, I would be interested in to see something like that. <laughs> yeah, I guess I could see that. The uh, Pitka, the person who was producing or wanting to reveal the following, after the film's first success, success they had pitched a story for a sequel that would have starred even professional golfer Tiger Woods with Jordan in a smaller role. And they were talking, I mean, they were talking about a different thing in February of 2014 is when Warner Brothers officially announced the development of a sequel that would have starred LeBron James. Charles Ebersol was set to produce it while Willie Ebersol wrote the script. So think about that for a second. They thought of this seven years ago. Yeah. And it's just now coming out right and even james himself had said quote i've always loved space jam it was one of my favorite movies growing up if i had the opportunity it would be great and they were in the studios with them and they signed a deal with warner brothers for a television film and digital content after receiving positive reviews for his role in train wreck which i've never i don't remember seeing that or spring hill entertainment signed a deal with warner brothers for television I never saw that one. Uh, Justin Lin, of course, he came in. He was going to be the voice, a couple voices, I think it was, or he wanted to become the voice. Uh, the filming principal photography began on June, June 25th of 2019. Now, principal photography doesn't take that long to do. It, in, um, it, it can take a month or two. Principal photography just is, you know, the beginning parts of digital frequent sequences. Like if you're doing a background of, Say if I wanted to take a picture of the Eiffel Tower, you know, or if, like a cut scene where it shows that, you know, London 2022, that is principal photography. So somebody actually stood there and said, okay, I'm going to roll some B-roll film real quick. We'll put this into the main movie and et cetera, et cetera. So it's shot usually without the general big artists there. And then later on, they mix it in and stuff like that. Um. They also use the the Goldstein residence, really, designed between it and James Goldstein, including tuning his tennis court temporarily into a basketball court for the shooting. That's pretty cool. So it took just roughly under just a month and a half of filming, which is so they started in the 25th of of June and they ended, they wrapped it up on the 16th of September. So again, it doesn't take very long to do a movie. If you if you get the stuff that the, the the post production is what takes the longest, I think. Yes. Yeah. It received twenty one point eight million dollars in tax rebates from the state, and a production spent a total of one hundred eighty three point seven million on filming, which is really weird. Now, some of the critics, some of the people, I should say, some of the general public. Some of their statements and stuff, what they feel about this. I don't know. It's kind of got some good ones, that's for sure. (laughs) It was kind of mixed, kind of related. A lot of people like one start it, two start it. I mean, even like you've got a lot of your five stars, but there's the one stars are definitely giving it a run for its money. Yeah. In the in the public reviews. Two out of five, Rotten Tomatoes rated at 35%, Common Sense, two out of five, Metacritic, 37%. That's kind of a kind of a moment. Apocalyptic Horror, Space Jam 2. (laughs) Somebody said, quote, I sat in a dark theater staring up at the movie screen and asked myself, is perhaps the unanswerable question, what exactly does Hollywood think an algorithm is? So they were talking about different things about how it felt, how it felt, how it would look. It's kind of interesting. I don't know. The very first one I didn't see in a movie theater. Did you see it in a movie theater? I did not. Hmm. I actually, I have HBO Max and I was planning on watching it with my kid today. Right. It just came out on HBO Max today. So, I mean... Reading some of these reviews, it kind of makes me not want to watch it. Right. But then, as an avid lover of the original Space Jam, I want to see it and see what they did with it. And see if it's a five-star movie or 
if it's maybe a two, three star movie. You know, I it's one of those things. Everybody's different when it comes to movies. Right. Everyone's got their own opinion. Oh, yeah. I want to form my own opinion rather than take it from a review and see, is it a great Looney Tunes movie? If it's anything like the original, if it's better than the original, if it's a flop, you know, right. I want to see that for myself. A lot of times, see, this is a problem with when you have a, a when you have the golden egg, you have mm-hmm. a, you have a, a, a movie that tripled or quadrupled the amount of money that it produced, how much it costs versus how much it, it took in. 80 million for the first Space Jam, 250 million it took in. Subtract that. That's a hundred and seventy million dollar profit after paying all your your you know people and and everything else. So you have a budget or a plus of a hundred and seventy point two million dollars. So you right there, you've doubled your your amount of money that you put into it, which is a good thing. This one seems like it's lost some of its money, and a lot of times these movie theaters or the I'm sorry, these movie producers, these these Hollywood producers will say, okay, I have a I have an idea for a part two of this. Now it worked on lots of movies. I could think of several right off the get go, obviously Dora or not Dora. um, uh, Finding uh, Nemo. Finding Dory. Dory, That's who it was. And Nemo. Okay. Those two worked really well. You had obviously Toy Story, Pixar, Toy Story. All four of them. All four of them were gems and made tons. Harry Potter series made a ton on all series. So my point is, Sometimes a part two or a sequel to a a movie isn't always the wisest choice. So you're taking a risk. You're taking a very high risk for it. To me, I feel that they waited too long. And and, and it's it's definitely one of those well overdue movies. It should have been out like, you know, I wish they would have made a, um, well, they, what about Roger Rabbit? They should have made a sequel to that one. Oh that was, my God, I loved Roger Rabbit. It, that it movie was, was pretty funny in a sense. It was, it was funny. It was kind of. But it was also for a more like mature audience in a way. It was titillizing, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, that's that's the thing, though. It all depends on, you know, the parents and mm-hmm. what they will allow a child to watch. Because I know me, growing up, I watched Robert, Roger Rabbit all the time. Right. My parents were okay with it because it wasn't mm-hmm. overly out there. Right. It had just enough to make it more of a, you should probably be a little older to watch this. But it wasn't too far pushed out there to where you had to be like 13 and up right right so it had its it's you know it pluses and minus too it was on the edge it was on a teetering edge of you know adulthood or a you know it had that pluses so uh, the older people are like ah wink wink while the other younger probably wouldn't figure they out they didn't some of understand any of the innuendos the wink and, wink mm-hmm, mm-hmm. stuff going on yeah exactly I the other one too with Robin Williams, you know, dude looks like a lady, of course. Um, Miss Doubtfire. They should have made a sequel to that. They should have. Sadly, they should have. I think they waited too long for that because you know, the the late Robin Williams, they they probably would have done a really good job of that one, just like with Jumanji. Jumanji two. Oh God, yes. They waited too long for that. If they, they waited had... way too long because I haven't even watched the new Jumanji because. To me, it doesn't feel like Jumanji. It like does. I've seen clips, I've seen trailers, and to me, that's not Jumanji. Right. When I see like, or feel it, I I think of Rob Williams. Exactly. They put. Okay, I'm not gonna say anything bad about the actors because they're all amazing. They put The Rock, Jack Black, mm-hmm. Kevin Hart. They're great actors on their own, but that's not Jumanji. Yeah. 
And, and Jumanji was not. It, it, it's a board game, not a video game. Right. Again, I mean, I get that they were trying to push it into the future and make it more modern. But when I was. I was out with my mom yesterday doing school shopping and we stopped at Walmart. They actually have the Jumanji board game. Was it making noise when you walked by? The little no, drums. Thank God. <laughs> I think you I would probably just... would have left and never went back. I would but... run. <laughs> but when I think Jumanji, that's what I think. I think of the board game. Right. You're not pulled into it you're yourself you're not playing as a character right you're yourself and all these weird things are happening that's jumanji to me now, not you, xbox 360 do you think game. space jam was a a spoof or spin off of roger rabbit because you think about it you have Real life, and I just thought of this too, you have real life actors go into a cartoon world just like how they did in Roger like Rabbit. Did Roger Rabbit. I yeah. mean, that's that's a really good thought. I just I've thought of that. I've never thought about that. It's possible. So they had to... They could have gotten the inspiration from that and seen how well Roger Rabbit did and think, hey, let's do something like that. Let's do something with the most infamous celebrity, uh, and and but let's make it sports like so that will target that audience because a lot of people in that demographic love sports and they love particularly like basketball and stuff and not and obviously everybody knows and loves you know Michael Jordan. Come on, I mean mm-hmm. the guy is is a, a legacy. I mean <laughs> you bow. He's a legend. He's a legend. He's an absolute god of, of basketball. Oh, yes. But see, that's what I thought, too. Like, I think they waited too long for this. Yeah, I can understand. Oh, you know, yeah. that's like a generation or something that skipped uh, some of the people's reviews on this new movie. Okay. Sorry, excuse to promote all of the other WB Warner Brother properties doesn't compare to the original. Somebody said they gave it a half a star and says, quote, this movie's only purpose is to promote name brands and over glorify LeBron James. Uh, This movie five star rated said, quote, this movie was epic or this movie was epic, pure for epic for younger generations. (laughs) I mean, I mean, I could just go on and on. People are saying it was disappointed that Warner Brothers would put this out for kids and not McDonald's would part and that McDonald's would partner with them when it not appropriate for the same audience. Cursing and adult innuendos aren't appropriate. Wish I've noticed the P and PG and not taken her because she took her granddaughter out. Uh, Warner Brothers has always had adult aspects, but this was primary for an adult audience and not well done for any age. Now that that she or they, Patty, wrote that and says that, brought up a good point. Do you remember? Are you ready for this? Yes. Animaniacs. Oh my god! I actually, I I actually watched Animaniacs not too long ago because they have like the older cartoons on mm-hmm. Hulu. They have some of the old cartoons that I watched when I was a kid on Hulu. I'll have to look into that because I do have Hulu. Oh my god. They no. have they Animaniacs have. was crazy out there full of antics and I loved it. Now as they said they was always had an adult aspect for it. It always had those wink wings as we talked about innuendos Animaniacs was now it depends on how well you read between the lines. I mean, my my take of something could be totally different take of your your aspect or your your thoughts could be totally different than my on it, you know. But Animaniacs, it seemed like a lot of people can agree on was very winky wink, you know, innuendos of of stuff that is kind of adult related. So I guess that's what they're referring to. Warner Brothers has always had that adult feeling to it and it was glorified into this movie as well too. Graphics were good, everything else was done to praise King James. So people are saying 
LeBron, you know, is just a, I guess, a, a lever or um, a platform, if you will, to raise or boost LeBron James's image. I don't know if he's his profile of, as a you know his his profession is declining, is his celebrity status declining, and he needed a booster shot or you know the world. Okay, but when when I think of like anyone. Mm -hmm. that goes from sports whether it be you know basketball or you know like wrestling mm -hmm. when i think of people going from that into something else it's not so much maybe it's not so much to boost their ratings and stuff back mm -hmm. maybe they're just trying something different kind of like the rock the Rock, John Cena, um there's there's others in sports. There's football players that go and do movies. There's basketball players obviously oh, yeah. that go and do movies. There's I know some of the guys in NASCAR have gone and done movies. Mm -hmm. It's not just to boost their their ratings when it comes to that sport. Maybe they're just reaching out and trying something new. Trying to see if, it a shot. So something. See if it's something that will fit for them. I gotcha. So it kind of makes sense. Basketball is pretty tough on the joints, kind of tough on the body. As exactly. you get older, maybe you just want to kind of settle. You, you still want to be part of the public's eye, but you just take a step back and say, I can do some movies. I can do stuff like this. Get, you know, hire a, a acting coach you know, do, do two, three months of acting exactly. you know, and stuff like that. That's pretty, that's a good point. That's a good angle to look at. Uh, one of my favorite reviews here says quote for a half a star. It's like a good movie, but with all the good acting dialogue and writing, I'd rather watch my son's second grade production of Bambi sober than watch 10 more seconds of this post Taco Bell bathroom visit of a movie. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Dude, that's that's funny. That's crazy. Um, visually wise, I can people are, are raving about the visuals. I can understand it because just like with anything, as time progresses, just like now, the games or movies in five years will look different than they do currently because we will step more into the future of technology. Mm -hmm. So people are raving that it looks a bit of visuals, the villain and the story. You know, it well, of course the visuals are going to look different. I I remember just like I said a couple months ago, the original NBA. I keep saying NBA because they are part of it, obviously. But Space Jam, and it had Michael Jordan, and you can just kind of tell the green screening was kind of in its infancy stages. Exactly. You could see a little bit of you know kind of the darkening and the shadowing and stuff like that. So it wasn't the best. But I mean, would you really go? Would you wait? And watch this for free, like on Netflix, or would you just literally go to the movie theater today if you had a choice between, say, this weekend? Say, for example, you wanted to go for your family this weekend, said, you know, we're going to go to the movies and we're going to spend seven dollars a pop for each ticket and we're going to sit down and watch this movie that's 115 minutes, just shy of two hours. And we're going to sit down and watch this compared to the other one, which was an hour and 28 minutes. This one's almost up there near two, two hours. So are you going to watch, are you going to like pay for this or would you just wait because of the mixed views, reviews, people saying it's bad. Some say it's great. Would you watch it just for free? I mean, if I, if it was something that, you know, my kid really wanted to watch, and I had the extra money to go mm -hmm. and see it in theaters. Yeah, I'd take her because one, that's that's making memories, whether you like the movie or not. Right. But then again, I mean, like I said earlier, I have HBO Max, so I can watch it in the comfort of my own home. Right. I can make popcorn. I can, you know, throw it on the TV, have a movie night and, you know. And do all the stuff that I can do going to a theater without actually going to a theater. But mm. me personally, yeah, I'd probably go see it in theaters if I if 
I had the, the extra money and my local movie theater was open. Hmm. A lot of people say, somebody said, quote, it was two hours long. I stayed maybe 45 minutes before walking out and I watched paint dry, which was more entertaining. Horrible acting on the court. What a nightmare. Just not a good movie. What can I say? Poor acting movie. It was nothing else but a cash grab. I stayed up until midnight to watch this on HBO Max premiere. I wish I went to sleep instead. So it really does have, again, it all depends on the person. Your taste yeah. is different like, than everybody else's taste. Like you're reading the one stars, the half stars. Here's a five star review that I, I see. And it said, I love this movie. It has literally everything. And one of my favorite things about the movie is I love how all of the Warner Brothers characters are watching the basketball game. The movie has DC, Harry Potter, Wizard of Oz, Game of Thrones, The Matrix, Scooby-Doo, Flintstones, King Kong, The Iron Giant, they've got Rick and Morty, and so much more. <laughs> it says, I would recommend this for ages 9 and up. When I say this movie has all Warner Brothers characters, I mean it has all of them. That includes the characters from the Warner Brother horrors movies, including mm. Pennywise, the Gremlins, and other horror characters you might be able to get a quick glimpse at. It, it says this movie felt like it was three hours long. More than half of this movie was basketball. So if you don't like watching basketball, I wouldn't recommend this movie to you. When I watched the trailer for this movie, I didn't think it would be that great. I never thought they would even make a second Space Jam. When I heard this movie was going to come out, I was curious what the movie was going to be about. What would the story be? I watched this movie, and the moral of the story was better than I expected. The only part of the movie that was questionable was when the algorithm wanted LeBron to be a movie star. Hmm. And I'm, I'm not going to read this part because that's giving away some of it. Right, right. But I was also at a bit of a shock when I saw Pennywise in this movie and never thought they would put Rick and Morty as well. Also, it was a bit... I lost my place. Hold on. It says, I never thought they would put characters from an R-rated horror movie and a PG-rated movie about the Looney Tunes who play basketball. Overall, I enjoyed seeing all the characters from other Warner Brothers movies. I would totally recommend this movie. It was filled with so much action. Hmm. See, that is a thing, too. Do you remember when when you watched a movie, I don't know if uh, I would have to look what was the rating for Roger Rabbit as an example. Uh, you said this was PG rated. What was the, let's see, can I, can I don't find it, 80.9. It doesn't say if what the rating was for the original Space Jam. It's kind of curious how things do that. I know for a fact, if you say the word damn or hell, just even if it's just in one line or just. The original Space Jam was a PG as well. Okay. And Who Framed Roger Rabbit, believe it or not, was also PG. PG. Now that I can see because of the innuendos again, what we were talking about. So it seems like Warner mm -hmm. Brothers, no matter what it does, it, it does, you know. Does the old uh, PG thing, but it covers their, it crosses their dots or, you know, it crosses the T's dots, the I's. So that way it covers them because if somebody says any curse word or anything like that, then it's immediately. PG. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember if boss baby two, I know there was, um, there was a movie that, and it caught some, it caught some, uh, grief. Where it was a quickly, it was two females who flirted together. It was a very, very brief scene in a movie that I had seen. I, I, I don't know. I can't remember what it was. And it was just a one line or a very quick line. And she said something about either the word lesbian or she said something like that, which would be, you know, it, to some people would be kind of. A big deal. A big deal or, you know, questionable, et cetera, et cetera. So because of that one little word or that little innuendo scene, they made it from a G to a PG. 
which it's kind of weird. Even if it had like a, a gun, like a reference to a gun or something, maybe be it's re- yeah. rated PG because of the violence in it because of the mallets. And, you know, like Roger Rabbit was infamous for the, the little squeakies, the shoes, and, and then also the, the mallets, the Acme mallets and stuff that would hit the characters in the heads and stuff. But maybe that's what it was. Uh, somebody says, quote, in a five star rating, the storyline was nicely done. Graphics on point two, way better than the first movie. Well, on the other side of that stick, somebody said, quote, horrible acting was bad. Plot was dumb. At least have a real basketball game instead of what they gave us. It was a cringe fest, just a terrible movie. Here's one. It's a two star. It says some of the references were awesome. I love the Looney Tunes. and They made them look really good in this movie. But oh, my God, the story was awful. They could have focused more on the Looney Tunes. I could have cared less about what they decided to focus on. I'll probably never watch it again. This movie is despicable. Now, you mentioned there's um, quite a few different things. Um, Rick and Morty. Um, all that fun stuff. That's kind of crazy how they added all that stuff. Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, Daffy Duck, Lola, Porky Pig, of course. Everybody knows Porky Pig. Uh, it, it's kind of weird how he didn't. Let's see, they're recruit, trying to recruit Michael Jordan, who previously helped them beat the monsters years ago, but accidentally locates Michael B. Jordan instead. So there is kind of a uh in the ribs right there so it seems like it, uh during a break time sylvester attempts to quote recruit michael jordan who previously helped them beat the monsters years ago but accidentally locates michael b jordan instead so michael b jordan of course is an american actor and producer he's known for his films like um fruitville station boxer donnie creed and creed and eric killmonger in black panther that's where he's really known for Black Panther, the 2018 movie, of course, respectfully. So they found him in staff, which is funny. So I could see that. I could see it in a twist like that. It would be funny. But there's a lot of people in here. Like I said, there's a lot of people that you and I even can still relate to. LeBron, of course. Uh, Zendaya. I'm not too familiar with Eric Baza. He's, of course, he's a, he's a, a voice actor. He is the voice of Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, Elmer Fudd, Foghorn, Leghorn, and Marvin the Martian. Do you know Mel Blank was the voice of Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Elmer Fudd? He did like 99% of all those voices. Pappy Le Pew, Sylvester, the cat. I mean, he did all those voices back in the day. That's interesting, and I did not know that. The man of a thousand voices, I believe, a Porky Pig, if I didn't mention it. He did a lot of acting. He did Barney, the voice from uh, Barney Rubble. He did uh, stuff from space movies and stuff. So he did lots of different voices. So that's kind of interesting. If he was around to this day, it'd be kind of cool if he was. Gabriel Iglesias is also in there. He was the Speedy Gonzalez. Nice. He's funny. He's a. I think he's hilarious. Fluffy. Here's uh, another one star review. Okay. It says a movie made for adults. It was overloaded with references to things that children wouldn't relate to. Game of Thrones, MC Hammer, The Matrix, Gremlins, Rick and Morty, a serious crash show on Adult Swim, and so forth. It seems that no modern material was used. It was excruciating to sit through, but it, I did doze a bit, so that's a plus. <laughs> I mean, when. To me, this movie, yes, it's a family movie. It's Mm -hmm. something that would be good for all the kids and adults as well. But I think when they were making this, the reason they're using stuff that children wouldn't relate to as much, it's because the children that watch space jam are grown up and adults now with children of their own. Right. Exactly. It's not, Hey, we're going to make this exactly like the first one. It's we, we grew up watching space jam and we have done just that we've grown up. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things like the matrix and gremlins and that kind of stuff that's the stuff that we grew up with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So 
throwing those in like Easter eggs. I personally think that's awesome. Right. Especially like Gremlins because one of my I favorite things. Movie. Ugh. I hated those things. It's so scary. When when we were at Walmart yesterday, my mom found a gizmo. Oh no. In the electronics aisle. And yeah, it made me feel old because, you know, my kid didn't know who Gizmo was, but it made me feel a little warm and fuzzy inside because that's the stuff that I grew up on. Right. And I feel like, yes, this movie is supposed to be a family movie, but I feel like it's aimed more at the kids that grew up on the original Space Jam movie. And I can relate to that too. I like for me, if I see a movie that has like little uh, Easter eggs in it like that, I could be like, Oh, that is really cool. Like, Oh, they added this to it, which is, you know, it's giving like a thumbs up, like a little ha ha, you know, I love Easter eggs when it comes to stuff like that. And you you mentioned quite a few things. I'm surprised people didn't realize who like Harry Potter, even Rick and Morty, you know, I could see the gremlins. A lot of people don't know who that is. As you mentioned, some of those mm-hmm. kids who saw that original movie now are adults with their own families. So they can relate to that. You know, like if, if people, you know, how like transformers, they don't know what the hell transformers are, but a lot of people who grew up yeah, in that exactly. era, it's just like with anything, those sixties, you know, people don't know much about, you know, the love bugs and stuff like that until they introduced mm-hmm. the bugs back into the, you know, the Volkswagen bug and beetle, if yep. you will. So there, I mean, it, it, it does, it, you know, it repeats itself. Time does repeat itself to a degree, but I don't know. I, yeah. Like the, who framed Roger rabbit. I wish they would have made a second one of that. They really should have. Cause that would have been kind of interesting. It made a 329.8 million in sales at the box office's budget back then, back from June of 22nd, 22nd, 1988, 50.6 million. That is huge. Now that was really in its infancy stages of greed screed. Mm. And of course, so you got to remember there's the music part. You have, you know, little Uzi, you have Jonas Brothers, you know, Big Fridia, you have Leon. Wayne, yeah. You have all these people that are, are in these movies, uh, the film. And that also contributes to the, the price of the licensing and all that stuff. Yep. It's kind of neat. And Lucas Films, too, did a lot of the, uh, if you're obviously Lucas Films, Star Wars, Industrial Light and Magic. That was like with Jim Henson and stuff as well, too. So that's really a big thing. If they did the visual effects, that's pretty damn neat. It can't be that bad of a movie if they have like Lucas. I mean, Lucas Films, if if you're going to put a stamp of approval on with them, then you got to have something. Oh, yes. You have to have something good. You have to have at least something. I don't know if they're tied in with Warner Animation or if they know anything with Warner Brothers in general. But if you think about that, and Hans Zimmer, he is, man, what movies and stuff has he done? The Pirates of the Caribbean series, that's what it was. He did that, The Lion King. So he's the the director of the music on this, it seems like. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Looking at overall, obviously, you know, Rotten Tomatoes is a very well-known website for movie ratings. Oh, yeah. They... They got a, their, the film holds an approval rating of 36% out of 100, which the average rating is about 5 out of 10. So it's kind of like 50-50. Hmm. But with the, the 36%, I feel like maybe people shouldn't be too, too critic on it. Right. Because, you know. Yeah, it's not going to be the same. One, Michael Jordan's not in it. Right. That's that's a big thing. If, it is. If you grew up with the first one. But this is 2021. Things change. Right. You it's if you wanted Michael Jordan, go back and rewatch the first one because it's not always like it's not always going to be the same actors in the sequels. 
you know this, I know this, and I just, I feel like people are being too critical on, mostly on the fact that it wasn't Michael Jordan and it was LeBron James. Right. I just, I feel like, you know, until I watch the movie, I won't know for sure. So, all I can say is, you know, you don't have to be super critical. If you didn't like the movie, then you didn't like the movie. But for some people, it's probably an absolutely amazing sequel. Right. And, yeah, it's got a whole different feel with it being more about, you know, the the son's um, software stuff right. rather than just straight basketball and space and fighting the monsters and stuff like that. But, again, to each their own. Yeah, and this one is more developed towards, you know, a family. Back then it was Michael Jordan, of course, you know, NBA star legend of number one legend in the world when he was in his heyday. And he's coinciding with, you know, Bugs Bunny and, and all them to save the world. Here we have it now where it's more updated, more modern for the people who are more this kind of a generation where they are more computer suave. They know more of a computer versus what a calculator is. So they're going to target that audience more so, so that way they can gain as much money as possible. But the story is written different. As you mentioned, it's a different technology, different generation. People are different. People won't know, as we mentioned, you know, who some of those people are, or even the original space or yeah, space jam was. It's just like some of the moderators I have for my channel don't know what the hell a Nintendo is. And that's when I really felt old, <sighs> but we won't mention his name that has hair. That's red, but I'm like, <laughs> Holy crap. But yeah, that, I that think it goes to show like the difference between generations. Right. And sometimes it kind of makes me sad that, you know, our generation has all this cool stuff that, sparked the the movement into what we have now right and the younger generation doesn't know how what they have came to be what it is whereas you know they just you know i have this this is good i don't need to learn about how it started and where it came from Right. Yeah. They want just, it, it's, it's, it's weird. They, they don't want the backstory of it too much. I don't know if there's a backstory on it. There might be a backstory. Of course, the little hidden innuendo where they're looking for Michael Jordan, but he's, you know, they look, yeah. they find the other person who has the, you know, the Michael B Jordan or whatever it was. So I can get that. That's kind of like a, you know, like a ha ha, you know, we, at least we tried to find him or so that's like something you and yeah, I can relate exactly. to because we've seen the original. But I'm kind of curious too. I might see it if it does come to HBO. You said it's on HBO Max right now. It is on HBO Max as of today. Now, do they charge you for that, or do you wait like 30 days and then it becomes free, kind of like other movies? That uh, are... If you if you have the HBO Max, okay, it is completely free. Okay, I could go on the PlayStation right now and put on the HBO Max app and watch it right now if I wanted to. Okay. Do you think in time you will probably do that? You'll probably watch it tonight or maybe sometime this weekend and probably just uh, relax and, and think, oh, okay, this is going to be something I can watch and give you two think cents I of will. it. Okay. I will. I'm pretty sure I will put it on and watch it because I've been looking forward to seeing it. And <laughs> it, it just came on HBO Max today. With with HBO Max, when it drops in theater, mm -hmm. it drops on HBO Max. Gotcha. And that's what I love about HBO Max. I love it because I can watch. I I don't have to go and wait in line, buy a movie ticket, spend a bunch of money on popcorn and snacks and drinks and all that stuff when I can do all that 
right here at home. Mm. I can go buy a box of popcorn from the store, make sure I got drinks, any snacks we want, and I can even do something and make it like a movie theater experience. Right. Like, I can make little fake money. Like, I bought my daughter a, a money set to mm -hmm. help her learn her money and stuff. I can, she cleans her room, I give her some money. I'll make a little, like, concession stand, put little mm -hmm. snacks in there and make her use her money. And buy stuff and make it like an actual movie theater experience right here at home and i can build her a little fort in the living room and do it like that you know i can i can make it fun right yeah i could totally get her, that right. but i still don't have to go and actually spend the money for a ticket and right ten dollars for a bucket of popcorn for three people now, Dan Haskett, he was one of the workers of the first Looney Tunes since 1979. He was hired to work for the animation department as well. Uh, mm -hmm. They haven't really worked with Warner Brothers since Looney Tunes back in action. I believe it was in 2003, as I mentioned earlier. Um, now they were talking about with Lola Bunny, as you know, everybody was saying, you know, she was kind of smexy, a little too sexy for being a cartoon. Well, they reveal, yeah. revealed that the new legacy, the new movie, Space Jam, a new legacy, they will stay true to previous designs of the Looney Tunes characters, and Lola's final design was adjusted to be less sexualized than the very first film. Because if and you that's, recall... that's a good thing. Yep. They, that's a very good thing. There's traditional and CGI animation, or sorry, CG animation as well, too, on this. So, is it a plus? Is it a minus? We'll have to see. We'll have to find out. A lot of people, again, there's mixed reviews. A lot of people are either you're a one star, half star, or a five star review. Rotten Tomatoes, of course, have given it a really poopy review, which is sad. A lot of people are yawning. They think it's horrible. They think it was a bad acting. Again, you got to remember, though, he's not really an actor. He's a basketball player. and Exactly. If, and if you know the one dude, the big guy himself, and I forgot his name, but the one Shaq, I was going to say his mm -hmm. real Shaquille O'Neal. He's not much of an actor, but he's in a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. But, you know, that's just how it is. People are saying it's a failure for it. But again, this is a new, it says it on there. It's a new legacy. So that means it's a whole new chapter. There's some touch points where it goes back into the first one. But we'll have to see. We'll have to read it and see what it finds out. You know, we'll have to read and find out what happens to it. Maybe I'll look at uh, this week and see how the ratings are going and see if it increases or decreases. I will watch it and I will give you my honest opinion on it. <laughs> okay. Well, I'd like to see. I'd like to hear about it as well, too. Looks like that's going to be the time for us today on the Megabyte Podcast. But remember, if you want to listen back to the old podcasts and future podcasts, all you have to do is go to one of these channels right here. You can listen to on our previous episodes and future episodes on Anchor on Breaker, Google Podcasts, Radio Public, and Spotify. And until next week, we will catch you guys later on. Have a fine evening. Catch you later.